is communicating to us the revelation of wisdom. So he said the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, the king of Israel, semicolon. To know wisdom and instruction and to perceive the words of understanding, what happens next? To receive the instruction of wisdom, justice and judgment and equity. Remember when Baba came, he made us mention these things. So, to, so this is the goal of the book of Proverbs, to know wisdom. And to perceive, go back to verse 2, to know wisdom, uh, yes, and to perceive the words of understanding. So it tells you that many people in life lack the perceptive capacity to see something that is teaching them. In other words, people do not realize that every event of your life is too tillage that must be mastered. Because if you don't master that information, you will transmit it one way or the other without properly putting it in context. You have been in three relationships, all of them failed. And nothing has moved you to determine why it keeps failing. In your mind, men are bad. But actually, in the, if anybody looks at the scope of matters, there's something you keep repeating. So he said the purpose of wisdom is so that when you encounter something that must teach you something, you can perceive that this is a teaching moment. This is a moment to learn something. Because of all successes we will ever have, most of it begins with failure. If you don't fail, you don't learn again. <laughs> that means failure is just telling you that what you thought you knew was not enough knowledge or even wrong knowledge to start with. So you have to ask yourself a question. You've never been single a single day in your life. So you don't understand why you keep entering the hands of crazy men. You don't even understand, yes. There was a time, I, I, I think last year or so, I had a, a session with some people. And after teaching, some of my daughters came to me and said to me, Daddy, I realized that my whole life, I'm lacking a father's love. That's the reason why I'm choosing guys. So some of the ladies who want to date, is the absence of daddy's love. That's why you think you are in love. Yeah. That means that if you are, if you, excuse me to say, sometimes fathers were in your life. They were not divorced. You were not in a divorce home, but they were too busy to spend time with you. So because of that, it created a void where you think that you need some. So when a guy says, I love you, you think it's, it's the love for marriage, but it is a father's love that is you are looking for. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I've not started, I've started, excuse me, of this. <laughs> Being the spirit <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Are you here with me? So you must understand of a truth that the purpose of the book of Proverbs, what we are trying to tell you from scripture is that so that you know wisdom and instruction to perceive the words of understanding. Then he goes on to say what? Verse 3. To receive instruction of wisdom. So he says, knowing wisdom is one thing, but receiving instruction is another thing. Many people don't like instructions. Today, one of the points I'll show you will blow your mind. It's a very simple thing, but people prefer the other rather than that. To, to receive instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment, and equity. Now, you have to understand what the instruction of even judgment is and equity is. Yeah, fairness. Then it says in verse 4, what I say in verse 4, to give subtlety to the simple, that is to impart wisdom. Can we do passion a little bit? King James is making it 
Let's do passion. Let's see what it says. He says, these proverbs will give you great skill to teach the immature and make them wise. To give the youth understanding of their design and destiny. That means that without wisdom, by default, you are sabotaging design and destiny. Hey, are we here together? Are you sure? Then he says verse 5. So this is the overview of what is happening here. So the instructions I'm going to give you are from the spirit, but they are in the context of the book of Proverbs. And I said they are a lot. But for the wise, these Proverbs will make you even wiser. And for those with discernment, you'll be able to acquire brilliant skills or strategies for leadership. Verse 6. These kingdom revelations will break open your understanding to unveil the deeper meaning of parables, poetic riddles, and epigrams, and to unravel the words and enigmas of the wise. So he's telling us a whole lot of things over here. Can we go to the verse number 20? Proverbs of the 20. Yes. Let's read together. One to go. All right. Keep going. Hold it. He's trying to say something interesting. That means that that academic curriculum is not designed to impart you wisdom. That's why in the African parlance we say you have school sense, but you don't have home sense. Yeah, you don't have home sense. You like it. <laughs> but you, you are very intelligent, like masters, first class, but home sense, you like it. Because he says, wisdom is not taught in the institutions and halls of higher learning. They are actually taught on the street. He said, the hustle and bustle, everyday life, its lyrics can always be heard above the ding of the crowd. You will hear wisdom's warning as she preaches courageously to those who stop to listen. That is why I'm telling you that what I'm coming to show you today is this. You'll be able to distill lessons in matters. For instance, if I have Pastor Chintok in my life, Apostle Isi in my life, Apostle Tommy in my life, I have all these men of God, Bishop Oti in my life, Pastor Isaiah in my life, all these men of God are my friends. They are various ages. Now, most of them, I can say, are between the age of 55 to the age of 35. That means that that's 20 years of lifespan. Now, listen to this. In that 20 years of lifespan, if we multiply everyone's experience in God, minimum 15 years per person, that's about, give and take, I have about 10 people. That's in God. That means that give and take, 10 times 15, I have 150 years of individual experiences individual ecosystems and cultural systems that I do not need to live. It means I don't need to live 150 years to gather all this information. I just need to arrange myself with these people. And 150 years of different experiences are available to me. Hallelujah. Today I'll show you that there's an engineering for companionship. There are some things if you don't learn by companionship, you will never know your life. You'll never know your life. So the moment somebody is talking, I have to understand the lyrics of what wisdom is telling me. There's an everyday event going on. I have to hear the lyrics. Your life will not change by mistake. You will not wake up one day. You know how when some of you are angry or are down, you go and sleep? <laughs> Thinking that when you wake up, all oh, is well. It's lie. It's a lie. <laughs> you, you realize that where you were was a dream. This is reality. We are back to the horror of life. Because according to uh, um, Newton's law of thermodynamics, he says that every object what remain in a constant motion until a, a what inertia, eh? until an internal force is applied. Yeah, those who didn't belong to master where are they? <laughs> external force. In, it's called inertia. And uh, okay, it's what you have, but external force comes to jam it, then it changes direction. That means that whatever your life has been now. Today, we suggested a message. I was praying, actually, when they were asking me, what are the messages you should listen to? I think a lot of you have listened more to Legalities Part 1, but you've not listened to Part 2. Part 2 is where the engineering is. Part 1, I'm telling you the things you are doing, that is getting you a problem. 
Part two is showing you how to remedy the problems. But that, you have not listened to that one. You see, that's human being for you. When they say die, you will die. You, you are finished. Seven reasons why the cases will work. You will see 30,000 views. When you say, how you work in life, only two watch it. It's like people like hearing death more than life. That's the nature of man. We like bad news and good news. Yeah, that's why most of the tabloids have to twist. Have you ever gone online before? Pastor narrates how he first slept with a girl. And when you go and listen to the message, it has nothing to do with that. It's like it just, bad news just pulls you like, come and watch. That's how it works. Amen. Amen. But legalists, that's why I put it up to that. I said, you push, you listen to it. Because if you listen to what I said, you understand certain very deep things about your life. And why you have been designed to break breach, uh, to repair breaches. Yes. I explained that the way Fares and Zara were born, one was called breach because it is not normal the way they came out. And I mentioned a breach is also like a roof with leakage. That means that your house is supposed to be all things be equal, but there is leakage. Something is leaking destiny. And if you don't do something about it, that leakage will not be repaired. If your roof is leaking, right, it's like, oh, let me give you, it's, I know some of you, your house leaks from time to time. <laughs> so sometimes you put bucket there to support the water. <laughs> now, when the rain ends, you're like, ah, thank God. Now, the fact that it's not raining doesn't mean that your roof has been sealed. Some of you think that the fact that you're not feeling, facing problems doesn't mean that the breach has been repaired. You think because the, nothing is happening, oh, your breach is fine. Till disaster shows up, then you realize that Kai, there was a breach that has not yet been repaired. There's a breach that has not been repaired. And people wait for events. And sometimes events are so powerful, they suck you into emotions. You forget that there is something that even caused it to start with. When the emotion dies, you think the problem has solved. Then your child experiences the same thing. You're like, ah, what is going on? Then a prophet will now tell you that you have ancestral case. You're like, ah, it's true, it's true. No, it is an unrepaired breach that has transited generations. Go, listen. <laughs> Jesus said it in John chapter 3. He says, now Jesus, the prophetic word came in Psalm 82. Ye are gods, but you die like mere men. He said, ye are gods, Psalm 82 verse 6. But he came in John chapter 3 and said to them from the last verses downwards. He says, now I think verse 34, John 3 verse 34. See, he repeated the same thing. He says, the word of God not said ye are gods. He says, uh-huh, uh-huh. No, 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 go to, that, that's what? Is it 31? 1036, not, not 3, sorry. Yes, go to 1034. Start from 1034. Yeah, and Jesus answered, is it not written in your laws? Because they were angry that Jesus said, I and my father are one, in verse 30. So he says, is it not written in your laws that ye are gods? Verse 35 says what? It is, if he called them gods, unto whom? So when he said ye are gods, it was a blanket statement. But the people who received the word manifested the statement. Are you reading what the scripture I'm saying? He said, if he called them God. So when he says, ye are God, he didn't say it in a blanket context. He said, the, so Jesus now explained that that statement, ye are God, was not just a general proclamation. It was a proclamation to those whom the word of God came. Those who received the word of God and did something about it, they manifested that statement in the scripture, that you are God. Are we together? Yeah. Are we here together? So I'm saying to you that are hearing the word, that unto you that are hearing these scriptures and the, script, the revelation of the word, you are the breach repairers. You are to repair patterns in your house. That means that there's a kind of living you must live with a certain level of precision. Yeah. yeah. Are you awake? Yeah. I'm not sleeping. No. By that precision, you don't marry anybody. You don't want to marry everybody. By that precision... You see, <laughs> some breakups, you know, is deliverance. Oh, yeah. You will not cry. You go like, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Because what is happening? So it means that I can have two responses to a breakup. And it's all based on what I know. Because even the spirit, I, God, is, God is delivering me from a cobra. But because I don't know that is a future cobra. Right now, the cobra is an egg. So the boy I'm dating is a cobra as an egg. He has not yet hacked. 
So by the time I realized, I'm like, oh, why God, have you done this to me? Why have you denied me um, um, status of being a, uh, somebody who is dating? Why have I not had a beloved up to now? And God is also in heaven saying, ah, I've delivered you from a cobra. But you are crying that, why won't I leave the cobra to hatch? That's what I'm trying to bring your mind to. So as soon as information comes, that's why you see, I'll show you today in the teaching. When knowledge comes appropriately, when disaster is happening to a man of knowledge, his reaction is not frantic. He knows what has caused it. So the way you want him to react, he's, he's informed. <laughs> he's informed. His emotions, when your emotions are in everywhere, it means you are not informed. An ill-informed person will have a scattered emotion. When you are informed, you know what caused it. You know what to do to repair it. You know whether this one can be repaired or must be allowed. You know. Hallelujah. I'm giving you an overview. I've not started the message. And I send it to you. See that I've started. <laughs> but this is the part that came to my mind and I was so concerned about it. Proverbs chapter 1. From 25, as we just read. Let's see what it says. But ye have set a knot. Oh, please go to Passionate. Okay. That's why people don't like reading King James. In the, the Proverbs in King James is very confusing. He said, Because you have laughed at my counsel and have insisted on continuing in your stubbornness, look at what is happening. I will also laugh when your calamity comes. And I will turn away from you at the time of disaster. Make a joke of my advice, will you? Then I will make a joke out of you. That means that when God is giving you counsel and revelation, I I told somebody some days ago, I was in a a certain meeting somewhere. I was telling the workers yesterday. A man of God, I gave a prophetic word to this lady that the Lord is, he said, prophet of God, give me a word. I said, this is the word of the Lord. (laughs) And even the word of God, I didn't say, I see you entering breakthrough. I just prayed for it. I said, Father, in Jesus' name, that every breakthrough that's supposed to come her way in this coming year, I cancel and destroy every impediment in her life in Jesus' mighty name. When I was done, amen. The person who asked me for a word now came to me and said, man of God, I don't have impediments in my life. And I said, oh, sorry. I just said, oh, we bless God, you don't have impediments. I just kept quiet. As soon as I turned, the Holy Ghost said, for that action, she will face consequences. Yes. Because I didn't call you to prophesy. You said I should give you a word. Do you understand? I was minding my business. You said, man of God, please give me a word. Then I prayed for you and made this proclamation. Then you said, you don't have impediments. <laughs> Faith. No, it's, it's, it's how, that's, um, you see what they just said. It's, the, it's much of the answers we give. When people are giving counsel, be careful you marry. It's not everyone who can go to America now. Be careful this job you are taking. Oh, daddy, I can do it. I have faith. He said it is, it is insulting wisdom. Wisdom will just back off and say, you are not hearing me. Stand here. The day calamity finds you, you'll be shocked. You know the painful thing about it? You usually don't even remember the day counsel was given. You forget that you were ever told not to go in the first place. You forget it. I've not started. We are doing. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Don't be fooled. Open your spirits. There's more coming. <laughs> Instructions for life. Let me show you another secret today before I continue into the diff- different por- portions. Number one, the life God gave you has its intelligence. The eternal life is not the human life. Please, the moment you get born again, stop trying to live like the worldly people. You are not. The Bible says when you were once darkness, now have you become light. What friendship has darkness with light? You cannot be unequally yoked with an unbeliever. You, we are not at the same. They are called the sons of Belial. We are not the same. So the people you are sitting in the office with, the life they are living is different from the life you are living. If you are confused about that, go and ask Egypt. The people hitting their backs and lashing them for building Pitom and Ramses. They were lashing them all. When these people go, they go and sleep in darkness and pain and boils. And the people they were lashing were entering houses of peace and joy. So we can all appear at the workplace. 
I can look like I'm struggling. But as soon as I leave office, I've entered my, I live in a different realm. The fact that we appear at the same location does not mean that we are in the same realm. That's what the Bible said in Deuteronomy chapter 3. When he spoke in Deuteronomy, he said that, that the heavens over your head. That means that all of us can be seated here. Generally, there's an open heavens over Ephesus. But some of you have personal closed heavens. No, the heavens is personal. <laughs> yeah. He said the heavens over thine head and the soil under thy feet. It's not all of us. It's your own specific. So we can all be in the same office. And your friend who doesn't know God is sitting under closed iron heaven. I am in the office with you, but I'm under open heavens. It's the reason why if I understand this engineering, they'll keep asking me, why are you always happy? You are not dating, but you're happy. Like, you, you, you don't have a car, but you look okay. It means that I'm in the, I'm, you are seeing me. But beloved, now are we the sons of God. It does not appear. Appear means that it's not apparent to the naked eye. It's not apparent to the naked eye. So we can go to the same class together. We can go to the same office together. We can sit in the taxi together. Listen, I've had testimonies of people who were in the bus, and the bus had an accident. A Samatote seven times. Everybody in the bus died, and two people didn't die. One even sat at the driver's seat. It crashed at a spot. He was intact. Not a bone was broken. And when we asked him how it happened, he said, when the accident happened, he was first in the trance and saw a hand scoop him from the car. And the hand went to put him at a small place gently. So everybody died. And so we can be in the same bus. There will be an accident. And I won't die. But when I enter the bus and I understand the operations of a sent one, I will tell them in the bus that because of me, like Paul, no evil. If it's left with me, I'm not dying. Paul said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to Rome, so this sea won't stop me. But <laughs> he said, but I have extended my deliverance on all of you. I said, I'm like that. But do key chaos. And a certain man was entering a plane, and he said, ah, man of God, you're in the plane. We are safe. <laughs> he said, if you are here, then we are safe. We know you are not dying now. <laughs> yeah. Barosale brosos. When you sit in plane, there's something called turbulence. You've not seen turbulence before. Uh, and there's another one called um, um, gusty wind. When you come to land, the wind is still blowing. So when your, your nose is like this, it's still raising the plane. Then they'll tell you, um, ladies and gentlemen, we are struggling to land, so we'll be back again. Then, who we are in the air. That's how you see people speaking to Zabora, Tal Sakabe, Zora Baba, oh Jesus. <laughs> The God of the book, the God of they will start calling God, they don't even know. <laughs> yeah, because he's about to die. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All this at every level. Praise God. So when wisdom is talking and you are not able to decipher wisdom, I'll show you why people don't decipher wisdom. Let me show you a secret today. I think I said last time I preached to you. Let me say it today to you. There is no problem you face that you were not previously informed. The only problem is that you didn't hear or you were not focused on an answer. Or much more, the way you wanted to be answered was not how the answer came. Look, when we get to heaven, eh, you will see God in something called the white glove. There is no excuse you will give God. That God will not show you the opportunity. The Bible says there were some that refused in Hebrews chapter 11 to accept deliverance. Hebrews 11, 35, 36. That means that those who were sown asunder, those who were wandered as sheep in whatever clothes, he said they refused God's deliverance. So can I announce to you, even the Matthias, God gave them an option. <laughs> he said, and others were tortured, not accepting. That means God brought deliverance. God said, you can escape. God said in the night, wake up and go. But they told God that, why are we waking up and go? It's the same thing Paul did. Agabus and the other prophets were giving Paul a way of escape in Acts 21. He says, the man whose girdle we hold shall be bound. He shall be beaten. He said, bros. Then they began to pray to Paul. If it is possible, don't go now. And Paul said, hey, hey what I've been called to, I must fill the cup to the full. I must not live a satisfied life. I must live a fulfilled life. Satisfaction has to do with your pleasures. Fulfillment has to do with his will. Get it right. 
If everything about your life is about what you want, you are living in satisfaction, I bet you you'll never be satisfied. You get a wife you are looking for, <laughs> you want twins. After twins, you want triplets. Then now the triplets and the twins come, and now you are feeling frustrated by the children. Now you don't have time, so you want time. Then if God does not help you and are not spiritual, you go and look for a side chick. That, no, nothing will satisfy this world. <laughs> Your flesh is incapable of satisfaction. It's incapable. Nothing will satisfy you. Why do you think people sin sexual sin and say, Lord, this is my last time. I won't do it again. <laughs> you, have this, you, you satisfied yourself. That's why you can pray that prayer. <laughs> it's not real repentance. When, it's, when you leave the vacuum and you start building emptiness, you see that now, the thing you say, you swear. You won't do it again. It's like something has held you. You can't stop. It's called satisfaction. You are not living in fulfillment. Hallelujah. <laughs> Why do you think men are tired of women and are looking for men? And women are tired of men and are looking for women. It's satisfaction. Then when they are done with women, they say it's not enough. They want to change. It's satisfaction. Then when they change and it's not enough, they want to now meet animals. It's satisfaction. Then very soon after getting the animals, they want to be animals. It's satisfaction. They are not satisfied. Then now they like children. It's satisfaction. It's, it's, I'm telling you, that realm, you, that realm will never satisfy you. Because you are trying to use mundane things to satisfy what only eternal things can satisfy. Only the eternal can satisfy. Only the eternal. There are some people, this is how they live their life. iPhone 4, they bought. 5, they bought. 5A, 5B, 5C, they bought. 5D, then they went to 6. 6X, 6 Mini, 6 Pro, they bought all them. <laughs> As I'm talking now, somebody is waiting for 16 because 15 has come and they have it. So, so it's like every six months we are buying a new phone. And the phone is around $1,200, $1,500. Yet the person says that they can't give to God. No, are you listening? They can't give to God. Oh, prophet, an uncle bought it for me. Sell it. Because you already have, also, you have 14. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And you are working as if you are mobile uh, what's it? Mobile service is the distributor. You have iPhone 14, iPhone 15, and iPhone 15 Pro Max. And when you come to town, you are just holding it with your and feeling good, like, yeah, <laughs> you just let you are like, hey. And after that, you come and tell God you don't have anything to give Him. God is watching you. You say, you, you lack, there's a certain missing instruction in your life. Yeah. Yeah. I went somewhere, somebody said, ah, man of God, you're using two phones. You have become like us. I said, no. <laughs> I haven't become like you. I said, I have two phones. One of it is for my wife and my family. That phone, when I go on retreat, that's where my wife calls me. Yeah, it's for emergency people. So if you don't even have a second number. It's an emergency number. I don't know used to call you. Yeah, because I don't have two phones too. I'm not a telecom agency. Every two minutes, hello, hello, hello. Hello? The God called me as a man of God, not a telephonist. My first anointing is to hear God, not hear you. My job is not to pick your calls. You can be angry all you want. I don't care. Because your anger towards me does not diminish my anointing. But God's anger towards me reduces my capacity. So I'd rather be happy with him than disappoint you. Easily. I call prophet doesn't pick. I text him, prophet. So I even told prophet, somebody sent me a text. Say, prophet, it's my birthday today. I really covered your prayer. I said, wow, powerful. Is this morning I really have not sent the prayer? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the prayer yet. <laughs> I will not force it on anybody. Are you understanding? <laughs> Can we live in peace, eh? eh? And understand that this man is not a phone person. Just let's understand. Yes, Jesus was available. I'm not absent. I'm available. If you come to the office, we'll have a wonderful chat. But that you want to do chatty chatty with me. The one that I do even like my life is Shalom Prophet. How are you doing? Wait, 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 wait. Ah. And I've seen it too, but I'm, I'm waiting for you to add whatever you want to say. And I'm not here for myself. So I'm doing well by the grace of God. Some people are very, you know, apt about it. They go like, Shalom Prophet, please, how are you doing? Um, I want to just check up on you. I hope you are doing fine. I'll just send you a clap's hand, blessing. Because if you take my phone and see the number of Shalom Prophet on my phone, 
You see that thing you have been suffering on, on Ephesus page. Shalom, 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 shalom. That's how when I take my farm. CS, 70 shaloms. Why? And these my children here, they're dangerous people also, unless I don't sit in plane. Daddy, we have missed you. I say, it's, it's only when I... <laughs> Jesus Christ. Amen. They will never tell you they've missed you in person. It's only when you are away. Shalom, Daddy. We really miss you in church today. I hope you are doing fine. Greetings to you and mommy. Then I also do this. Blessings. <laughs> yeah. I learned it from my, my, my fathers. Yeah. <laughs> my first anointing is not teaching. My first anointing is not pastoring. My first anointing is the prophetic. And that one, I need stability of thinking to receive information. So I cannot sleep away. There are days you realize the prophet is engaging, you are shocked. Those days have entered that anointing. A tick up, bam. Have you noticed some of you experiences? Hello, how are you doing? Daddy, please, I'm fine. Okay, so what's going on? Wow, wow. Okay, they're sending voice note. Bah, 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 bah. Then all of a sudden, bah. The Lord bless you. I'm gone. <laughs> it's gone. The anointing has left. <laughs> so in the middle of you are happy that today the prophet is chatting. Bah. The anointing has finished. <laughs> I say another time. <laughs> so sometimes you say, oh, Daddy, thank you so much for talking to me. It takes another three days if I say, Shalom. I'm gone. Can we understand ourselves yeah, yeah. to help us? I honestly truly want to answer your calls. I truly, oh yeah, I truly want to. So right now my phone is on silence all the time. Because I realize if I don't take care, I will not sleep in life. <laughs> I said, one of my daughters sent me a missed call. I said, ah, is everything fine? So that it is a mistake. I said, hey. <laughs> So I, my phone will not be on, so you can mistakenly flash me, and I'm thinking, is it emergency? Are you dying? What is happening? <laughs> Amen. Yeah. If it's emergency, you will call mommy. You, are you understanding? You will find a way to get to me. Then I know it's emergency. But in this, we are fine together. Hallelujah. And please, Monday is resting day. Monday is resting day. The best you can do for us, oh, daddy, yesterday's message blessed me. That's all. Don't call. Can I talk to you today? It's the day I rest. Eh? Yeah. For me, I'm going to Pram Pram. I'm going to Potter's Place. Yeah, because I have to honor my mentor. Yeah, I have to go there. When I go there, do sing, celebration, Moses Bliss. This boat won't finish right now. It yeah. <laughs> means I'll finish like 11 or 12 a.m. Yeah. It means I'll get home like 2. Then you send me a text at 7, Shalom, Daddy. I want to have a word with you. <laughs> uh, we are preaching on Proverbs. <laughs> Instructions for proper living. Instructions for proper living. Hallelujah. So he's saying that when Proverbs speak and you don't listen, in the day you are in trouble, it will not hear you. It will not give you counsel. Very important thing you have to hear. It, it will not give you solutions. Because the, what he's trying to tell you is that wisdom is given before trouble comes. You see, from what he's saying, he says, I will laugh when your calamity comes. I will turn away from you because wisdom never comes to you in calamity. It comes to you before calamity. Remember this all the time. In that regard, you will hear things that makes you go like, ah, but this will never happen to me. No, it's wisdom. Don't disregard it. There is a reason God is allowing you to hear it. As long as everything you took and every decision you took leading to that point was God, then there's a reason God is letting you hear what you heard. Some people have devised that trick, and they know now that when they are talking to me, even my conversation is prophecy. So they are very careful. And like that, this thing I've been joking, I beg, I beg. Yeah, they know. It will happen like that. I'm one of my daughters. She has a very powerful ministry, some ladies' ministry. Yeah. She came in those days in that ministry. I just prophesied to her. She wanted to go to London to go and do law. I said, sister, I see you doing business, and I see you entering Dubai. <laughs> he said, hey. I want to be a lawyer in London. I say, me, that's what I've seen. Let the will of the Lord be done. That's what me always do. If you like challenge, I don't care. Because I'm not telling you what I feel. I'm telling you the counsel of the Lord, which will stand by all means. After a while, she now came to say, prophet, I'm not afraid. Yeah. It became so serious that her, she got pregnant. And was, when she was pregnant, she said, she told me recently, I said, prof, I was thinking, whether it's a mistake that I got prof I got pregnant. I said, hey, what do you mean? He said, you have not said anything about my pregnancy. I said, sister, 
when you and your husband were enjoying yourself, did, did you ask me if it's the will of God to enjoy yourself? I said, please. The way you enjoyed yourself, my permission, carry this baby without my permission. I can't be. Ah. I said, that's not it. I said, that's not it. Try to give a prophetic word about how the baby will come. And God fulfilled it for her. Very powerful something. So wisdom will always come before trouble shows up. Today, I want to show you how to harvest it before it shows up. Because a lot of you don't think that. And you, how many of you have entered problem before? Then later, you are wondering why the problem happened. Then you begin to realize that, ah, you saw all the red flags. But you just decided that, oh, it's not my portion. My no me, I am the holy one of the Lord. My own is different. My case is different. <laughs> Your own is not different. Wisdom came. You were just pretending that you've not heard it. So the first thing to understand about wisdom is, and from what I've just said, go for wisdom. The first instruction for proper living, and when I say proper living, I'm saying living God's life. Now, we can't live God's life outside God's prescriptions. Let me show you one thing. Grace is God meeting you where you are. Listen to me well. Grace is God bringing you salvation, blessing, inclusion, where you are. But God will never leave you where he met you. He will carry you into who he is. That means that if God found you in sin, he will by grace meet you. But when he now meets you, he will journey with you from that sin into a certain life of glory. Always remember that. When you understand this truth, you will never in your life validate grace to be God's overlooking of your errors. You understand that grace is God meeting you where you are and journeying with you into his abilities. Into what? Because if you are not like him, you can't live like him. If you are like you, you can't live like God. So God comes to you. In other words, he humbled himself like the incarnation. He came to us. He became us. He became us. So he became us for the purpose of making allowances and openings for us. The moment he got us, he carried us by journey into his divine abilities and living. That's how God designed life. Always remember that. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Are you here with me? Yeah. Are you here? Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. So if God did it like this, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 1.30 that Jesus Christ has become unto us wisdom. The first thing, Luke 2, 52, Jesus ever grew in was wisdom. Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature. So even God said, this is my life. I told you last time when we spoke about the application of the cross, that what Jesus suffered on the cross was his gift to us. But the life of perfection he lived on the earth was the requirement he gives us today. He said, live the same life. 1 John 2 verse 6, anyone that abided in Jesus Christ ought also to live like Jesus. We ought also, it's, it's, it's required, it's necessary. Amen. Amen. Say from today, from today I, decide I decide to follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. From today, follow I decide Jesus. that God works for me. From today, I do not make excuses. I accept, I accept what God what wants me to do. In Jesus' mighty name. Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Because remember, I told you about it. Deny yourself. Deny yourself. Deny yourself. I told you the same word that Peter denied Jesus. Deny yourself. When you misbehave, look, when you misbehave, you fall, you sin. Don't say, this is me. That's not you. Hey. The teachings has really created mindset because people go like, don't pretend. We are Christians. We have feelings. Jesus has feelings. Yet without sin. So feelings is not excuse to sin. Hey, Jesus also had feelings. Don't you think Jesus had feelings? 
Yeah. He said he's tempted with the feelings of our infirmities. So he too had feelings. Yeah. But you never hear Jesus say, but this is firewood, boy, this is firewood. That was not Jesus' anthem. He said, he that is from above. That's above all. He knew how to deny that feelings. Deny it. I'm not saying pretend that it's not there. Deny it. And the denial of it is not, I didn't do it. No, I did it. But that's not me. And I told you that when someone tells you what you did was wrong, tell them it's true. I accept my error. But when you are alone, I told you the denial is to yourself. I said, this rubbish is not me. I'm a, I'm a king's kid. How can I be drinking from the gutter? What kind of things am I watching? My eyes are purified to see the depths of God. My spirit carries the life of God. I cannot contain it and divisiveness. That's how you deny yourself. I see everybody in the light of Christ. How Jesus sees the ladies. I see the ladies. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. Don't do things on the ladies around you. And Jesus had a ladies ministry. You know that? Yeah. Women were sponsoring their ministry. Women everywhere. It means women went to raise him from there. They were going to try to <laughs> bath him. I can imagine. Oh, is it not? What the, when they were going to embark, they were what? Yes. Omo ko jari e funu no. Sure. They believe his ministry, but you there's no there's no. That's why the Gnostics believe that Jesus, one of them, was a something, because they just didn't understand that these women are around this man and just say he is not a Samson Kuma. You understand? He is not a chain there. He's not. He's not a. He's not a. Because Kuma is what. Hawk. Yeah, he's not a hawk looking for hens to, and chickens to chew. No. No. Amen. Hallelujah. So you deny yourself. Say, that's not me. I don't get angry like that. I'm a noble. My temper is controlled. That's, what, that's a confession you make to yourself. I love everyone. I can't hate anyone. I love everyone. I love the brotherhood. Yeah, I love the brotherhood. And as, you, as soon as you make that confession, you know what the next thing you do? I, I was not here to explain, but the next thing you do when you want to love the brother is start seeing the person's capacities. This guy is good in business. Oh, what? And from that day, sentence yourself, I will always speak of the good things of this person. That's the end. Any conversation the person's name comes up, if it's negative, eh, you don't get me. I'm dumb. Yeah. I'm very difficult to gossip to. Me. Hard. Even amongst pastors, they always tell you, say, Prophet, when you mention this person, they say, hmm, amazing. Oh, amazing. <laughs> it's worse, it's worse, it's worse. You know? And you know the shocking thing? Because I've trained myself, these are not the things I meditate on. When I'm done, I'm done. The next day I see the person, I don't even remember what I was told. Hello, the Lord bless you. Such a powerful ministry. Yes. I'm not his master. I didn't call him. I will not give him reward. It's not my business. It's not my business. Some pastors say they have the anointing to correct. You don't have some. Mind your business. You don't have an anointing for your life yet. <laughs> don't, don't look for trouble for it. Just focus on your life. Um, just focus. Tell your neighbor, focus. What is in front of Just focus on that and be fine. You'll be fine, cry. Amen. So the first point, instruction, is go for wisdom. Why do you have to go for wisdom? Today's one is Proverbs 19, the verse 2 and 3. He said a lot of people have had problems in their life. Verse 3. And they say God is, they, they don't blame anybody. Look what he said. He said there are some people who ruin their own lives and then blame it all on God. And this he said verse 8. Go to verse 8. See what verse 8 said. Lele begorash. Aha. He said, do yourself a favor and love wisdom. Learn all you can. Then watch your life flourish and prosper. So the first thing you go for is wisdom. Because you see, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 8, the verse number 22, thou possessed me in the beginning of the way. So wisdom said that God took a hold of him to create the world. The world was created by wisdom. The world was what? Created by wisdom. And Jesus even grew in wisdom first. That's why anything Jesus said, anything Jesus did, he never said, I'm sorry, it was a mistake. Wisdom. When a man works in wisdom, he knows in advance what he later wishes 
she knew. That means a man in wisdom is a man of minimal error. When you work in wisdom, you have minimum errors. Your error margin is low. 0 0.0001 infinitesimal. Very minimal. Because you, you consulted wisdom. There was a case you had to speak. But you know wisdom will tell you once you are incensed about it. By all means, something negative will slip out. So wisdom will tell you, pray. Barakatos kapaya. Relax. Iso parababa. Wise men don't speak from emotions. Something annoys you. <laughs> the, rest of, the word of the Lord said we shouldn't talk. <laughs> so <laughs> you think this is wisdom. So you avoid the topic. Think about other things. But avoiding the topic is not the operation of wisdom. The operation of wisdom, it's like people calling faith a risk. No. Wisdom is not avoiding the topic. And I don't even think about it. Beautiful. But you think about it again. So you, realize you don't think about it, but when you lie in your bed, bam, it will start replaying. That's how you say at 2 a.m. you can't sleep. <laughs> and you take your phone. Hello, what you did today? I didn't really like it. Go, 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 go. Uh -huh. I've told you my mind. It's off my chest. Good night. <laughs> 2 a.m. 2 a.m. Tell your neighbor, shame. You have not gone for wisdom. <laughs> he said, wisdom was possessed by the Lord in the beginning of creation. So how God created, he created by taking hold of wisdom to create all things. That is why God was able to know the species of all things before he said, let there be trees of all kinds. It was wisdom that gave that specification. So the nomenclature that Linaeus, uh, no, Carlos Linaeus brought us was actually activated by God. He just discovered it. Listen, no man invented anything. They just discovered what God had already created. Electricity was not invented. It was discovered. Because that water and that whatever current it has been there since. That is why when you take a pen and you stroke it upon stick or you take it upon something, it has magnetic capacity. So we didn't discover, we didn't create magnetism. Magnets were there on the earth. What has kept the earth in place? It was magnetism. So who created magnet? It was discovered. I like what one Christian, Christian philosopher said. He says, electricity is the divine life in the mechanic medium. Yeah. So it has been there. It says that somebody translated the realm of God and how God's life flows in us and put it in a machine. And so, ah, that's it. so it's been there since. Every invention is actually a discovery. Lift your hands to Jesus Christ. Say from today, I will be possessed by wisdom. So in everything that we're doing, wisdom was the guide. Wisdom was the guide. Go for wisdom. Go, I'm telling you, everything you are doing, go for wisdom. Wisdom actually is also the first stream of revenue, of wealth. Wisdom. Do you know you don't need money to build a house? Proverbs 24, verse 3. By wisdom is a house built. You use wisdom to build. You don't use cash. Have you ever seen somebody having cash and the kind of house they build, you're like, ah. <laughs> yeah, there's no wisdom in it, yeah. It's a house built. Some house when they build, realize this one, there was no wisdom in this thing. Yeah, space was not maximized. Just, wow. You can say, yeah. <laughs> I nearly said something, but I'll put myself in trouble, so let me keep quiet. Amen. But let me say it in a nicer way. Any house that you will build, build it in such a way that as you are at office, you want to go home. <laughs> Some people have understood what I'm saying. <laughs> that means that. The wisdom of building houses is for rest. So your house should not stress. So the goal of, you see, so when you don't understand why a building is what it is and the utilization of spaces, you enter a place, the color is making you feel like vomiting. Yeah. <laughs> that even you don't even know colors for open spaces and colors for closed places. You don't know. You don't even understand the principle of trees in the bedroom. It helps with breathing. Especially, yes, especially when you are staying in a, an AC room, you need certain plants that can absorb excess carbon dioxide because in AC rooms, there is no flow of oxygen. It is recycled air that has just been cooled to you. No, 
Because I'm online. Yeah, that's why. Listen, I, I did. Listen, can I maybe even show you the technology of sleep? 17, 18 does not make you sleep. The optimum temperature you need for sleeping is 24 degrees to 25 degrees for your room. That's what we call room temperature. So when you put your AC at 16 or 15, after it chills, send it to auto. Because if you don't send it to auto, that 16 degrees you are sleeping in, your body is not asleep. It is, there's a thermostat. Whilst you are sleeping, it is burning fat. To, that's why sometimes when you sleep in AC, you wake up more tired. Because your body is keeping, to keep the, otherwise if, you are, if it stops, you will freeze in death. You will sleep in bed and you will not wake up. Because your body has become so cold. That's a lot of people sleeping. You see, wake up, more fatigue, more tired. Ah, why? What? It's not. It's not spirits. <laughs> wisdom. It's wisdom. So when you are not proper living, correct. That's why when you see rich people, you ask, ask them why they have something called Zen gardens. Zen garden is not outside garden. It's inside. And it takes wisdom to know how to even keep what type of plant to put inside. Some plants repel geckos. And lizards. I'm telling you. So you see, some people have those plants inside the house, in the center of their stairs, but you don't find animals there. Because even some of the plants, the kind of scent, the kind of chemicals they re repel, it's a, it makes certain creatures not enter the house. Wisdom. And go and check every great man's house. Solomon had garden. Every rich man has a garden. No, this is wisdom you have to discover that ah, every rich person likes gardening and flowers. I've gone to some rich people's house. Some import it. They bought this, the Arabian cedar. They bought Lebanon's um, um, cypress wood. I'm like, ah, why? Then God said there is wisdom even in the trees you plant in your house. <laughs> yes, that is the wisdom of the elders. We like mango tree, above and plantain. The one that we can use to cook soup. That's the trees we plant. <laughs> so you, we don't know how to plant trees that don't benefit us stomach-wise. <laughs> what is this tree for? <laughs> if some of you had a way, you plant Oriza sativa in your house. <laughs> I know you are all quiet. <laughs> Zenzantosa zakitifolio. That's Coco Yam. So uh, some of you when you enter a certain house, you see that big tree with a big leaf and it's, there are holes in it. It looks like Coco Yam. You're asking, is this Coco Yam? Because all your mind is exotic, <laughs> carbo carbohydrate eating. You see that thing, is it a species of Coco Yam? It's not, it's not a species of Coco Yam. It's a plant. Look, let me tell you something. That means that wisdom can be displayed. Psalm 136, go there. Psalm 136, verse 5. Verse 3 and 4. Psalm 136, 3 and 4. See what he said. Holy Spirit, thank you. Give thanks unto the Lord. Uh-huh, verse 4. Verse 4, see what he says. Uh-huh, uh-huh, verse 5. See what he says. Give thanks to the Creator who made the heavens with wisdom. So even how the stars are arranged, the sun, the moon, God did it by wisdom. Wisdom is the reason why the sun comes the time it comes. Let me show you a secret today. If you're a woman, learn the engineering of keeping your home. Keeping your home means your house must be on lockdown. Lockdown means when you are not in the house, nobody can be Tom and Jerry. There's routine. There's what to eat. There's when to sleep. There's how much gas is used. Because you have scheduled it with a program. Yeah. Because if you don't know, if you don't program your children sleeping, you are creating dollars. Yeah. If a child does not have enough sleep, babies must sleep minimum 10 to 12 hours a day so that their brain can develop. Some of you don't even know that your lack of sleeping, last time I was discussing it, if you sleep less, your brain cells are expanding. So if you groggy, your head is aching, bazaar. Even that one affects the body weight you have. So you are not eating much, but because you don't sleep well, the hormones are not moving well, so food cannot be digested. So you rather, yo, check it. Anytime you don't sleep well, you start growing big. <laughs> What's the proper living? <laughs> Psalm 
Do you know that just as plants need sunlight, human beings need sunlight? That's why it's one of the greatest dangers to ever be down and close your windows. It will kill you fast. There's a way when you open the curtains, you come alive. No matter how you felt, just push the sun that shines. It makes your brain, everything like, yes, it's reversing certain chemicals. Like you just awake. And when you are sleeping, you cover yourself in the cloth like this. Ninjas. <laughs> <laughs> we can't see your head when we enter the... <laughs> my friend. And you say you are, you are limited oxygen in the system because you have, you have covered yourself with one big duvet and you are like inside. <laughs> you wake up sweating. You are like, ha! Ah. Who asked you? Lack of wisdom. <laughs> The next time you see people jogging the mountains, don't criticize them that, ah, these people have grown fat. Look at their stomach. That's why they are jogging. You must discover the wisdom of exercise. And one of the things I discovered is that God told me one day when I saw them jogging. God said, they are jogging because they've been giving sentences in the hospital. Yes. Because some people can see they don't want to do it. But they must do it. Those are the people when they jog small. <laughs> they don't want to be there. <laughs> they must do it. So then wisdom should now tell you that the moment I create an customization of my body to exercise, even when I'm 50, my body knows how to. I, I just know I need one week or two days of my body will just adapt, adapt. That's why footballers are fit for a long time. Because their bodies have adapted to 10 years, 15 years of rigorous waking up, jogging. It has trained themselves. That's why soldiers are like that. Because their bodies have trained. That's why no matter how he's a general, he can do a long walk. Two days ago, I was watching a video of Baba Deboe. And they said every time, he has 81 years, he walks three kilometers, you know, redeemed. Not just, he walks round about redeemed. And he's not tired. At his age, and he's tall. I've met him before. He's tall. He's not a short man. Yet you don't see him at 82 walking a certain way. He's still doing fasting, 40 days dry. What are you talking about? It is training. Over time. <laughs> Wisdom is knowing in advance what you later wish you knew. Some of your problem. Recently we had a daughter who had an issue. She said her tongue was bleeding anyhow. Then I think mommy told her that. I think you don't drink water. Check your water intake. I said, mommy, it's not... And, you know, because she's also into the health profession, she was like, ah, it's not a big deal. I don't think it's a water issue. He said, check your water. So she forgot. Then one day she was just reading online. She has medication. She just went online and they said one of the, and she found a diagnosis of it. It says like, something, something. And her tongue touches her tongue, starts bleeding, sores on her tongue. So he said when she went to check the, one of the first things that causes sores on your tongue is dehydration. He said, so she started drinking water. Just after two days of drinking water, the sore died itself. I've told you here before, your body needs water. Don't, when you are thirsty before you drink, it means you are in crisis. It means your body is under stress. That's why it's sending signals to your throat. Drink, drink. Yes! It's like a radiator. When the thing is low, the heat goes high. So when you pour it, scratch, 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 like he's choking on it. Coke. <laughs> You see, let me tell you, the wisdom, the, there's a wisdom you have to understand. Coke can dissolve bone. Yeah. Yeah. They can use that as a shah, sir. And there are people here who are addicted to it. It's just a matter of time. Oh, no, no, fair, but far more. You understand? You said that there's no devil fighting with his coke intake that has damaged your teeth. You see, I had to discover an engineer of microbiology. And I said, ah, sometimes you can eat, sir, and there's, two, there's meat in your, your jaw. But when you wake up, the meat is vanished. Yes. Hey, who? Which spirit? <laughs> <laughs> and I know I'm not a crocodile. That's a bird will come and be cleaning my... What, what made the bone vanish? Not knowing there are bacteria in your mouth. Those bacteria are activated by sugars and protein. 
If like eat sweet in the night and don't brush, chocolate, coke, sweet drink. When you wake up in the morning, there's a bitter saliva in your mouth. You know that bitter saliva? It's an acid. That's a product of the activities of your buccal bacteria. Yeah. That's what causes drooling. Ah! Oh my God. Father, baptize us with wisdom. Wisdom for proper living. I'm not here to teach on hygiene, but you see, learn to bath. <laughs> learn to bath. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> learn to bath. It is the washing of baptisms. Learn to bath. Even God designed a baptism system in the desert. He knew that if he does not create a system of baptism, they won't bath. <laughs> <laughs> because they are in a place where there is no water. So you have to create systems of washing. That's why even the Jews have a washing system. As long as you come from town, you wash your hands, you wash your legs. Because if they don't create that system, yeah. If you've, sat, if you've, if you've stayed overseas before, you see that the Africans, because of where we come from, we bath often. But some of them, two days if not. Because it's cold. Why should I bath? Like, what's it? What's bathing for? And the skin is white, so it can't deceive you. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Wave your hands to Jesus. Sounds a wisdom. 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 You are a lady here, you are married. It's wisdom to wear lingerie to sleep. We didn't marry sisters in a convent. Amen. Tell anybody that the way I are stiff. I, 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 why? Why are you stiff? Because I'm telling you the truth. You have been wearing this nightwear for three years. Three years. The same every night. Why? And look, do you know what I've realized? They will do makeup, wear hair, eyelashes. Then when they come home, the one who rather paid the bride price. The king of kings and the lord of lords. You will dismantle yourself. And say here I am. <laughs> it's wisdom. It's wisdom. Yeah. And all the men said. Eh. Hallelujah. <laughs> but the thing about wisdom is that Proverbs 4 7 says that wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is the first thing. Wisdom is the first thing. Wisdom is the first thing. Always go for wisdom. Always go for wisdom. That means that most of our life problems is not a devil problem, it's a wisdom problem. It's not a devil problem, it's a wisdom problem. You have to go for wisdom first. Go for wisdom. There's a wisdom for taking care of your kids. It's a wisdom. There's a wisdom for working in the company you work in. There's a wisdom for dealing with the boss you have. There's a wisdom issue. There's a wisdom for dealing with the husband you have. Abigail was operating in that wisdom. Yeah. She knew she had married a fool, so she knew how to adjust herself to his level. Yeah. She, she knew, yes. It's Anna. The proof of Anna's adaptation. She knew that I cannot lord myself as intelligent than this man. So I have to come to his level. Then he says, sir, you know that thing you did? David nearly killed you, but I beg for you. Please don't be acting like this. I beg you, sir. The Lord bless you, sir. That's how she was speaking to him. But in his absence, he was telling David, he's a fool. He didn't tell the husband in his face, you are a fool. <laughs> it will create a different problem. Yes. He said, I know I've married someone who is not too wise, sir. But God has given me grace. There's wisdom. It's always a wisdom problem. But the thing about wisdom was that he says, in all that getting together, then he says, look what he says. Revelation knowledge is what you need, so invest in it. Now, so buy it. Revelation knowledge is what you need, so invest in it. But when you read it in the King James, he puts it nicely. Go to King James for, the, for, for me in this one. The word is 
Uh -huh. In all thy getting, the word is Kenyan or Kenyan. Kenyan means acquired goods, properties, or money. So he says, in all your acquired goods, get understanding. What this simply means is this. The operation of wisdom is evident in this wise. When I buy a car, when I get a job, when I have a child, when I have a wife, I have to have the understanding for these blessings. Because the moment I don't understand the breakthroughs I'm getting, I will deviate from wisdom. I have to understand the reason why I'm a first class student. I have to understand why I have the shape I have. I have to understand why I have the height I have. I have to understand why I'm eloquent. I have to understand why I'm intelligent. Because the moment I can get this in all my acquired goods, what I got from the commerce, what I got from education, what I got from wherever I went to get it, I have to have understanding. There must be an understanding component to the properties and blessings you have. The moment the understanding is gone, you enter folly. You have to understand why you married the man you married. Yeah. Because sometimes if you take the time to mind, understand why you married the person you married or why you have the kind of child you have, you change the way you live. You change your approach. One of the things I've learned about couples is one of the first things that creates couple battles is people marry people they do not celebrate their difference. That means you are marrying somebody and the person is opposite you and you are using all you have to change them. Waste of time. Because you, 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 you've got something, but you don't understand why you got what you got. In all you're getting, the reason why you have the wife you have. Because if you now enter the heavens and understand why God gave you this woman who is opposite you in regards to the way you order things. You like your blues to all be lined up, greens to all be lined up, and she's like, whether it's blue or green, I don't care. It's lined up. There's a reason for it. If I don't know the reason, you know why you fight it and it never changes? Because it's even God who set you up. So you're actually spending the wrong energy on the wrong battle. So in all the things you get, get understanding. I gave an example in Kenya when I was preaching. I told them that. And I know it's, it's a general thing for everybody. A lot of you here have received money you didn't pray for. Like you were just there, somebody gave you $1,000, somebody gave you 1,000 CDs, somebody gave you $5,000. You're like, ah, what's this for? Oh, I just felt like giving it to you. And you were like, wow, hallelujah. And because you didn't have an understanding for it, you can't account for it till date. Because you don't even know why it came. So because you don't know why it came, you can't even know what to use it for. And that's why a lot of people, you see, that's the way Kenyan. So things acquired, acquisition, possession, purchase property, wealth. So in other words, anything you are purchasing, anything you are getting, any salary you are getting, get the reason, the understanding for it. The moment you get the understanding for everything in your life, wisdom will automatically flow towards you. So when I sit down, I ask myself, why do I have pastors as my friends? Why am I going to countries? I have to understand that. Once I have that wisdom, I will never feel proud. Because I know it's an arrangement by God. It's not because Adam is special. I know it's part of my calling that I have to go to countries. It doesn't make me more anointed than other men of God. That because, I, you know, there's a way we measure, oh, now he's traveling the nations. Yeah, he's doing well. It's not that. Understanding should tell me that that is my portion. That's my portion. The way Bishop Dark Dark School says, and millions of people gather. It does not belittle the pastor in a village who has 20 members. Understanding will tell you why acquisitions are available. Why are you getting the hundred million dollar contract? It's not because you are good enough. If you miss the understanding, that will be the last hundred million you touch. Because you didn't get understanding. So he said in all your gettings, that when you are getting a Lamborghini, there must be an understanding behind the Lamborghini. And it cannot be you. It must be God. So I don't go and buy Rolls Royce and say, ah, when I buy this Rolls Royce, I want to show the young pastors that God can bless you. That is flawed. Because that's not how God even shows us that he prospers us. I'm spending time on wisdom because it's so important. You know you're getting. It means that when you also get singleness, understand. Oh yeah. Understand why you are single. If you keep short-circuiting it, you will labor longer for your, your blessing. Understand it. 
Because you can't stand it. And yeah, a lot of you are getting things because people are getting it. That's no wisdom. That's no wisdom. Some of you here, when you marry, you have to know how many years you must face your children. You are not in competition with any human being on earth. The race is what is in front of you, not what is in front of your friend. You see two friends, this one give birth to three, they two don't give birth to three. Four, four, five, five. Uh, where they may do kind. <laughs> you lack, you lack understanding. So you are birthing because it's competition. My friend has three children, so me too, I must have three. When they go for, I also go for. You lack understanding. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's something you that you feel like, oh, she married in August, so I also married September. So it's like we are. In all you're getting, get understanding. In all you're getting, get understanding. I understood that. People took the lead. They came home. People also delayed, delayed and they are still enjoying it. Everybody's race is different. In all you're getting, get understanding. Not all of you drive a Range Rover. Settle it in your heart. No! Settle it in your heart. Some of you, the best car you drive is a Corolla. It's not a case. What do you need a V8 Land Cruiser for? <laughs> Someone say in Ghana. Beautiful. So you know you're getting, you must get the understanding why you got it. Not all of us will have jets. Because you don't need it. Not all of us will have satellite television TV. But today, everybody wants to start their own TV station. In all you're getting, get understanding. Why is your child super smart? Sometimes some of the children who came out of wedlock, they are dangerously gifted. You must have the understanding of why that child has the gift she has. It's not what he has. It's not because it's, 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 this, it's a compensation agenda by God. God is compensating shame. By putting extra favor on this one. Yeah. Why is it that the children who come after years of waiting, they become special ones in a generation? Go and read it over there. Put it there. Isaiah 54. I, just, I need somebody to be encouraged. Verse 1. Isaiah 54, verse 1. Single barren, thou that is not bare, break forth into singing, cry aloud, that thou didst not travail with child, for more, please put the Hebrew word for more here, is the word rab, rab. If you've read the book of Chronicles before, you see rab shake, rab saris, uh -huh, you see their names there. Put the word more there, for more. So when you read it in English, it gives a certain picture that your children will be plenty. But it's an error, because how can your children be plenty than the one who already has children? <laughs> Woo! In this year of the supernatural, God will give you supernatural understanding in the word of God. Yes. That understanding that makes the word of God practical. Solutions in your life. Yeah. Some of you read the Bible and all of a sudden you start a mining company. You start a water borehole company because you just caught a revelation. And Jacob dug a well. And that will just tear you up. And that becomes your word. It becomes your word. Have you found the Hebrew word? Put it there, rab. Arabi. Just get the meaning and put it in brackets so they can see what. Look at it, what it says. See what it says. Rab. Rab. And the word rab means abundant in quantity, size, age, number, rank, quality, abundance. So, enough. So, actually, the original translation of rab is giving different synonyms, but it's captain and elders. So, it means that captains shall be your children, elders, leaders shall be your children. That means that women who have suffered barrenness, God opens their womb to compensate them. Not just compensation. He delays giving children to them because the children that will come out of them are to lead the ones that have gone ahead of them. When you get such a revelation, will you be struggling that when are my children coming? You know captains are coming. You know captains are coming. <laughs> Everything you need is in the word though. It's just that you have to love it to find it. Love the word, you see. Go for wisdom. And you know you're getting good understanding. Hallelujah. Are you here with me? Can we fly now? I'll spend some time on wisdom, but it's the principle. Find it. Principle, find it. Wisdom is calling out. It's able to change the quality of your life. Wisdom. Find it. Proverbs 2, 3 and 4 says, Go for it like a miner. 
mine for wisdom. Mine it out. Mine it out. Yeah. Mine it out. Don't, don't joke with wisdom at all. Mine it out. And your life will be very different. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number two. Go for spirituality. You are going to be greatly deceived if you think everything you have must be in the natural realm. You are going to be greatly deceived if you think your greatest possessions are the things you can see and touch. Your greatest possessions in life should be intangible things. Bible calls them true riches, according to Luke 16, verse 11. Authority, power, influence, favor. Those things, they are intangible. You know, there's some people, as soon as they go somewhere, everybody will turn and look at them. There's some people, as soon as they appear in an institution, everybody will choose them as manager. It's the intangible riches. They are called true riches. True riches. There's some people, when they enter a place, even strangers become their friends. Yes. Yes. God designed some of you to look like the environments you enter. And you don't even know it's true riches. You are not trying to blend, but you look like one of them. When I go to Nigeria, they think I'm Nigerian. So, later on, God told me, he says, I designed you like that so they can accept you. Yes, because they think you are one of them, so you say you are not one. So when they say, oh, our Igbo brother, our Calabar brother, those kind of things, yeah. So I have an Igbo name, Chuboze. <laughs> My Calabar name is already Edem, Akwaibom, yes. Yeah, so, yeah. Where, tell you where you come from, it's your dialect. Adem, Adem means back. Yeah, so I know the meaning of my name. <laughs> yeah. Are you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So even the way you are designed has a way of influencing the people who hear you and listen to you. Yeah. Your intelligence is not for it's not for it's not for writing exams. <laughs> no, apply it well. I'm telling you, you will notice that your intelligence is designed to provoke the high and mighty to hear you when you talk because of your intelligence. Presidents will be like, who is that young man? Who is that young lady? There's, there's an articulation. It's not book sense. It is a wisdom that is operational. You've embodied it. You are confident. You never look like a misfit. Go for spiritualities or spiritual realities. When I say spirituality, spiritual reality. Spirituality is not kayo, kaya, kayo, kaya. After the kayo, you don't bluff, you don't paste, you are rude. That's not spirituality. <laughs> Have you ever seen someone like, kayo, kayo, kayo. and when you pass by you are like mm. it doesn't correspond their tongues and their smell mm. man of God I want to believe you but what is leaving you to me is taking me to hell not heaven I told you go for wisdom listen I know you have a sensitive nose you are allergies Pray for God to deliver you from allergy. <laughs> Even if you have allergy, there's something called non allergen perfumes. Yes. They are sweet. Look, even God, the Bible says, <laughs> yes, there's lime, abonwa, and katradia. You can use that one to clear things. Even God, the Bible says, the sacrifices of the saint is a sweet smelling aroma. When I check it, I ask God why. He says, aromatherapy reduces stress. When you enter a place, say, this place is smelling nice. You don't even realize that certain chemicals have begun to relax you. Bad smell. <laughs> oh, I nearly said something. There's nobody who goes to a KVIP smiling. <laughs> yes. If you don't know KVIP, you can Google it. You'll find what I'm talking about. It's a stressful environment. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Have you ever been in a... Okay, let me even use... You, you are in a room and there's a dead rat or a dead mouse. There's nothing that will make your night sweet. That smell. You, you, <laughs> if you understand... If you understand toxicology eh, and you understand the engineering of naval torture, you will notice that there are some things that they don't need to slap you. They can just use sound and smell to kill you. Like you can't take it anymore. Sound and smell. <laughs> you can't. That is why you can enter an elevator 
and somebody has released a Hiroshima bomb. Yeah. And <laughs> immediately you hold your breath. Then when you hold your breath, you start sweating. You're like, you want to ask the lady, oh my girl, you are too nice for this type of, what came out of you is from hell. It's not, you don't look like what came out of you. What? You. And the, I can't co- co- reconcile it. The smell and the face. I didn't know smell had age. <laughs> Till I heard a certain man say it. He went to someone's house, huh? and a young boy, about eight years, was on the WC. And when he came out, the man said, Hey, Aqualana, we <laughs> He said, Is this what is coming from a child's stomach? What has this child been eating? Yeah. It means that. My Kabosh Kalaba. <laughs> Ah, which one had that smell? That pungent smell. Is it sulfuric? What? It has that pungent smell. It has a very eggish. Yes. Sulfuric acid. When, it, when you do your precipitation, it starts like that. You see the whole place is like something. I remember chemistry class when I was in first room. When the precipitation happened, others added their own. <laughs> because <laughs> they knew that this is an opportunity to escape. <laughs> no idea. A portal has been opened. Opportunity comes at once. You see, everybody laughing here, they know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Somebody was pressed and he didn't know how to do that. So when he had the capital do, bam, he did boom. <laughs> so he was adding it to that. <laughs> so, bam! <laughs> he just release the bomb. (laughs) (laughs) Aromas are very dangerous. Don't joke with aroma. (laughs) So, for instance, you can enter a room and even the way the room is stuffy can affect you. And I don't know why Ghanaian hotels don't learn these things. Many hotels actually in Africa don't learn these things. Let the room be aerated. Let wind blow through. Especially when you have carpet as fabric, the room must be open because it is, it's, it's, it's dangerous. It's dangerous. Spirituality. Hallelujah. I thought it's a practical message. <laughs> Some of you are here for Greek and Hebrew. It's not going to happen today. <laughs> yeah, spirituality is key. The Bible says in Proverbs 1 verse 7, it says that, to know wisdom is the beginning of knowledge. The f- he said, wisdom, fear of the Lord, is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. So the fear of the Lord is what I'm talking about. In Isaiah chapter 11, the fear of the Lord is one of the seven spirits of God. This fear of the Lord is a dangerous spirit. This is what actually predates the law. It is what was on Joseph, that Joseph said, because he fears the Lord, he can't sleep with Potiphar's wife. Can I tell you something today? A lot of people enter excesses and extreme things and a lot of failures and sins because the fear of the Lord is not there. If you fear the Lord, there are some things you will never do. So when you ask, when some things are, you, there's no restraint, it's the absence of the fear of the Lord. I fear God too much. I like what the, uh, some people to have status. He said, I fear Jesus in them, Dr. Bill Johnson. He said, I fear Jesus in them so I can't hate my brother. I can't, you know, I fear God so much to even think I can violate his instructions deliberately. It won't work. I, I can do everything, but that's my brother. I can never love him. I don't fear God. I don't fear God. It's because of the lack of fear of God, people cheat on their spouses. Lack of the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is on you. When the fear of the Lord is on you, hoish, that's the way you live your life. Everything God has said is premium above feelings. Everything. So when you realize that you are becoming reckless, tell God, I, I want the spirit of the fear of the Lord. He said the seven spirits of God, the spirit of wisdom, understanding, counsel, mind, spirit of knowledge, and the fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord. David feared the Lord. So look at an apparent enemy. Saul, his chiefest enemy. David feared the Lord who so when he entered the cave, he said, Oh, king, when you slept at night, did the Lord not deliver you to me? He just caught the, 
His soldiers said, let's press a, a spear through his temple and finish this guy once and for all. He's been hustling us. He said, I cannot touch the anointed of God. Don't try. He said, God anointed this man. When a man fears the Lord, they can't even criticize a man of God. <coughs> it's the absence. And listen, our generation, and one of the things that's killing us is the absence of the fear of the Lord. When the fear of the Lord is not there, dishonor is natural. You don't even realize you are dishonoring. The fear of the Lord is not on you. <laughs> you are a child of God. You go for a party. Goom, 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 goom. Goom, goom, goom. You're not supposed to be there. And you are listening to the beat. Goom, 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 goom. Then you say, all the babatis I used to do, I do them no more. All the drinks, drinks I used to drink, I drink them no more. All the hot, hot alomo and apetashi, I used to drink them no more. It's a great change since I was born. Then they brought you alomo gin. And your friends were teasing you. And you say, oh, are you only a pastor? Even some of their pastors and some of their distance, uh, distance of their distance. It's not alcohol we use for communion, all those kind of things. So a little bit of alcohol, a little bit of the, Then you two look at the bottle. I say, mm, it's true, you have a point. You, it's the fear of the Lord that's gone. You have all kinds of whiskey in your drawer. You don't have versions of Bible. You, you, you can build the house and say, this is, a, this is the bar. And you don't have a library. It's the absence of that. Listen, when I enter your house, I just have to look at the rooms you have. It will tell me who you are. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So you may have three makeup rooms. It tells you that they are obsessed with their face. And the people who are of Zilla, eh? the people who are obsessed with their face, it wrinkles fast. Yes, because you are not trusting God to keep it. Gravity will work faster. Are you listening to me? Go for spirituality. It says in Colossians 1.18 that in everything, the Lord God will have preeminence. That means that when somebody sees you, the first advertisement of Adam should be the Lord. Not how I look, not how I preach. I should be so involved with God. Listen, whatever you are locked up in will exude from you. I've told you this many times. That's how God confessed honor and glory on a man. If I spend time with God, anytime you enter my car, it's God's word, God's songs. When I get to the house, my YouTube channels is mostly preachings or messages. When you take my phone, it's God, God, God. That operation, when you see me anywhere, the first thing that speaks to you is God. Nothing else. That's why I don't have to say I'm a pastor. When you look at me, you say, are you a pastor? Yet I'm in jeans, sir. God. I walk kaftan, short sleeve kaftan. Slippers and this into a hospital. As soon as the nurse enters, ah, you're a man of God. I said, why? I was going to visit a family member. He said, you're a man of God. I said, yeah. how did you know? He said, there's something about you. I have not preached. I've said nothing. That means that young men, you can carry God in. When you pass by a lady who is your Delilah, she can see that you carry God. She will not come near you because you are too hot. Hot in the spirit. Very hot in the Holy Ghost. Because whilst you are working, Zach Tolebe Kapa. You are working on your mind, they stayed on him. You are thinking about the earth and the goodness of the Lord. That the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. As you are thinking of such things, you are occupied. I'll show you something very soon in the principle of companionship. It's a dangerous thing. Dangerous thing. God must have preeminence. The Bible says, Proverbs of the 19, Kalo Farah Sanders. Does somebody understand the message I'm preaching? Are you sure? Verse 23, he said, The fear of the Lord tendeth life. Proverbs 19, 20, I see what it says. When you live a life abandoned, a life of abandoned love surrounded before the awe of God, here is what you experience, abundant life. So when you fear God, locked up in God being your... Mo Look, I can watch something. They are cursing God, they are joking about God. I don't watch a lot of American comedians because it's always an insult against the church. I cannot be impressed by such things. Madae, Madaho, Madaha, it don't impress me. I don't watch movies like that. Every two minutes they are cursing somebody. Every seven minutes they are speaking about some negative, vulgar word. And I'm comfortable. The fear of the Lord is not there. Or it has come down. He said, You experience abundant life. There's a life that exudes from you. Hmm. What does the fear of the Lord do again? See what it says. Verse 27, Proverbs 14. 26, 27. The fear of the Lord gives confidence. A lot of you have lost your confidence because you don't fear God. So the moment you don't fear God, you will fear your shadow. You will fear a spirit in the room. You will fear heaviness. 
Yeah, see what he said, verse 26. He said, the confidence and strength flood the hearts of lovers of God who live in awe of him. King James says, who fear the Lord. So anytime you are losing confidence, it means your fear of the Lord has come down. Can I tell you something? It is the fear of the Lord that has left you that makes you, God say, pray at five. You tell God, I can't pray. You think you are being a son. Eh? At this your level. Can I even tell you something that's very dangerous? When you were a child before God, he doesn't send you instructions. Let me explain what I just said, if you didn't get it. It means that anytime God tells you, pray at five, don't use the child card that I'm God's child. And so grace will work for me. If, <laughs> no, you are dealing with God like he's a human being who doesn't know what he's about. God does not give instructions by mistake. Every instruction has a deliberate intention for your life. So when God said, delete that number, don't say, uh, uh, but no, why? But he's not a bad person. I, you, 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 you lack revelation. You lack, you lack wisdom. Not as an insult, but biblical wisdom. Proverbs 1 wisdom. You lack it. Because when you have the fear of the Lord, you and God don't negotiate your instructions. That's what Moses had. God said, you will not enter. He didn't say, God, but why? He said, yes, sir. He agreed. There are things I don't want to do, but God said I must do. I didn't want to preach. I wanted to lead prayer. Prayer is my, prayer is easy. I just hide. And usually when I'm bleeding, up to now I still do it. So when I lead prayer, I'm in a big crowd. My eyes are closed. He should tell you that I'm not, I'm not ready for the crowd. That thing you see, my eyes are closed. It's not because I'm afraid of anybody there. I'm talking to the one I see. Not anybody in the audience. Because if I don't journey to him, all of you are going to be stuck on earth. So I close Katuva Hasparite. And I've beheld my maker. I've beheld my lover. And he's the one I'm talking to. I don't care whether you agree with what I'm saying or not. He's the one I'm talking to. So you can see even from my public operation that I'm not interested in audience. I've always loved to be hidden. The ministries I was in before, I always wanted to be at the back. To a point where I went to prophesy one day, somebody's sister asked me, I said, since when did the prophet start prophesying? When did Adam start prophesying? They were surprised. They didn't have been seeing visions since, but I've never said it in the mic before. So my, my first place is Rakopatataya. That's how my son's prophets, I don't train them to prophesy first. I train them to build spiritual capacity. Prophets have died from fame. When you are a priest in the spirit and fame is your strength, you will die soon. Capacities in God should be your strength. That one, you know that whole. When they tell you no, you know what to do. You are going back to altar. You don't need to talk to anybody. You know who to talk to. And the matter will shift. That's the realm you can stand and say in the name of Jesus. Father, that man said no, but he's going to say yes. Because you know where you are. It's not arguing physically. I'll handle you spiritually. That's our strength. You don't fear God. That's why you can negotiate your prayer times. Now, God was not wise to tell you to pray at five and you are telling God you are, are, are breastfeeding. No, so, no, let me ask you a question. So, God didn't know you are breastfeeding and told you to pray at five. No, you see how sometimes you deal with the instruction of God. You think God didn't see. The all knowing one gave you an instruction. You are trying to advise him that don't you see. That is not possible. It's lack of the fear of the Lord. It's the reason why we can think God's advice is like a friend talking to us. That's why when God even uses prophet to talk to us, we are like, I don't agree to this. You can dare do that. Because you've not even trained your ear to hear that this one, God is talking. If I fight this thing, I'll delay my own life. <laughs> Woo. There was silence in heaven. <laughs> So when you go and tell God that, Father, I'm sorry for taking you for granted. Because if my CEO tells me that I need you at the office at five, you will not sleep. I know you are breastfeeding. You will pump the breast. <laughs> the baby cannot be an excuse that day. Have you noticed? That's a man. But you take God for granted. So God must understand I'm breastfeeding. And the one who told you to, he knew that. Ah, I, don't you think I know? Do you know the shocking thing? Many of the times you're about to even give God an excuse that you're breastfeeding, the baby will be asleep. Because he knows he told you to pray at five. So the time you thought the baby will usually wake up, the day he told you to pray at five, that day the baby slept. And God is watching you and still saying, oh daddy, the baby can wake up at any time. Eh? The God who has made the baby sleep so you can pray, you didn't hear. God, baptize us with the fear of the Lord. This is spirituality. 
If the fear of the law is working, a lot of us can't do some things again. It can't work. It's the fear of God that's gone. That's why we are loose, we are Christians, but we are living like unbelievers. No, it's the fear of the Lord you need to tell God. Baptize me with your fear. Baptize me with your awe. So that when you talk, it means something. And that's why some of you, it's a long time you had the encounters because you are taking for granted his voice. And he talks, you take your, okay, God gave me a vision. And you are using the vision for revelation promotion. <laughs> Nothing for your build-up. The children have been responding. Say, <laughs> say yeah, 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 yeah. They know that I'm telling you something. <laughs> Hallelujah. Proverbs 10, 27. The fear of the Lord gives long life. The fear of the Lord gives long life. Prolongs your days. Prolongs your days. Let me show you something about the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord also translates into something so powerful where you now enter into the covenant of his friendship. The covenant of his friendship. Now, notice what he says. But the years of the righteous, the wicked, are shortened. Now, <laughs> go to Passion. Let's see what's said. Passion translation. Living the worship and awe of God will bring you many years of contented living. So how could the wicked ever expect to have a long, happy life? Now, I'm going to show you something very interesting. Can I show you? When it comes to the fear of the Lord, it is only generated by the practice of his presence. The fear of the Lord is generated by the practice of his presence. And the practice of his presence indicates God is present. God is present. If you see God, your life will change. Let me put it this way. A lot of you know things about God from books, from Bible. But it is an encounter with God that does the change. Knowing it in your head does not change things. It's an encounter that makes you want to enter what you know. Encounters. Check the Bible. People knew God from the surface. The Israelites, general knowledge. The brothers of Joseph, general knowledge. But the person who encountered God is the one who entered the things God was talking about in his dispensation. What that also means is this. I want to just bring to mind something so powerful. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 25, sorry, Psalm 25, verse 14, that the fear of the Lord... Hmm? The secret things belong to them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. Passion translation. Passion. See what he says. There's a private place reserved for the lovers of God, where they sit near him and receive revelation secrets of his promise. Do you have the Amplified Classic? And YLT, YLT Amplified Classic. He said, the secret of the sweet, satisfying companionship of the Lord have they who fear, revere, and worship him. He will show them his covenant and reveal to them its deeper inner meaning. YLT, the secret of Jehovah is for those fearing him and his covenant to cause them to know. So what he's trying to bring your mind to, the word secret here, I, I don't know which translation did that. Is it ASV or something? The word secret here, Yes, friendship. The friendship of Jehovah. That means that I cannot be God's friend if I'm not in awe of him. Please listen to what I'm saying very well. And this awe-ness of God, or the, the, the awe of God is the ability for God to control my emotions. Please listen to what I'm saying very well. An idol is anything that can affect your soul. <laughs> An idol is anything that can affect your soul, can control your feelings, can control your choices, can control your thoughts. That's an idol. Because that's where God must be. Deuteronomy chapter 6, the verse 4. Hear ye, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one. Thou shalt serve the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all thy might. You can see the things he's telling you to serve God with. All your heart, all your soul, all your might. And might here is the word that is used for finances. Not by might, not by power. He's speaking of the might of wealth with all thy finances. 
That's why he's talking about in the Hebrew. That's why I serve the Lord. So what am I trying to bring your mind to? If I'm not in awe of God, listen, I can tell you something. Jesus has visited me a couple of times. A couple of times, by the grace of God. The times I was busy. Recently, he came to my room in Nigeria. And before he came to my room, he told me that, Adam, be careful, you're going to get calls around the time I told you I'll meet you. But this meeting is dependent on what time you give me. Though I'll be waiting, nevertheless. So I now entered my room after a certain time, because he was now telling me I should have been there at 11.30. But because of certain meetings and calls, I ended up entering my room at 12. He was with me. He didn't even know that was what was happening. I didn't even tell him this. He's not here for the first time. So I told him I entered my room, and Jesus was already sitting on my bed. He said, ah, it took you that long. I said, Lord, I'm sorry. He said, Adam, but you understand that my time is precious. I honor those who honor me. Honor begets honor. Sacrifice begets sacrifice. Don't look for sacrifice where you've not sacrificed. Don't look for honor where you have dishonored. Honor begats honor. Sacrifice begats sacrifice. So when the Lord now said this to me, I apologized. I knelt on the floor. I said, Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, I'm sorry. I began to worship God. The room was full of light. And we began to fellowship. You see, a man changes at every encounter with God. Every encounter. Everybody realizes something has changed about you, but we can't, because it's a spiritual matter. We can't put our hands on it, but you look the same. But something, now, the more I intensify in encounters, when I pass by you, your, your heart will skip a bit. And you don't understand why. It's the terrifying presence of God we carry. So say a man of God will pass by you or he's standing by your side, and it's like your stomach is churning. That operation is God on a man. It's not a natural operation. So you go as Christ and the Holy Spirit, you feel that. Imagine someone with a bad spirit. They'll, they'll, they'll vanish. They can't come around you because there's something, there's something intimidating about your presence. It's not your height. When I sit down, most people don't. I've gone places. I was in Kenya recently. One um, 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 gentleman saw me and says, he didn't know I was that tall. The flyers don't make me look tall. If you look at many people have come to me and said they didn't know I was tall. I, told, I always, always jokingly say, oh, it's humility. <laughs> you know, when you are humble, even your pictures look small. Like, yeah. Please, oh, that's what I said. <laughs> Praise God. But when he said that, I realized it. So it's not about my height. It's not about my height. It's the presence of God. And it comes by those who spend time with him. Job said that spending time with God is what made me rich. That's why he said in Job chapter 29, the verse 4. Go to the ASV translation. I think he put it nicely there. Job 29, verse 4 in ASV translation. He says, I was in the ripeness of the days when the friendship of God was upon me. So the word secret is the word friendship. God was my friend. Why was God my friend? When God talks, I listen. When God says, put my phone off, I put it off. Friendship is only achieved by spending time. So stop saying God is your friend and you don't give God time. It doesn't work like that. It's not magic. How much time do you give God? How you give time to your friends? Is it the same time you give God? When your friend says, come to a party, everybody must forget because your friend says, we did party. When God also tells you, we are doing Holy Ghost party, do you shut down everything for him? Your phone is on. And God is in God, most high God. You know, one of the, <laughs> one of the days I was praying, God said, see, you know why sometimes I come visit my children? I said, Lord, why? He said, but you are abundant in mercy. He said, yes, but my presence is rare. I'm omnipresent, don't get it wrong. And I'm abiding in their hearts. But when I come out to stand by their side, it's a rare op operation. It's not every day you get that. And that one is for those who honor me with their time. And honoring God with your time means when you say it's time for devotion, phones are off. Nobody can beep you. Nobody, what you are telling the world is God is more important than any business deal. That's the realm of covenants that will be explained to you. There are things I teach you. What I just showed you about in all thy getting. The Lord showed me this afternoon. I was just meditating. Proverbs 4, 7. Proverbs, he said that getting is not, you have to always get wisdom. No. He says all you're getting is property. Go and check it. Then when I checked the Hebrew word, I said, oh my God. So when I remember Hebrew words, it's not me going through a lexicon and cramming words. God tells me this word. That's not me what it looks like. Check it. Then it opens up. Friendship with God. Wave your hands to Jesus Christ. Is somebody here want to talk about? Are you sure? Yeah. And 
friendship with God is the highest definition of spirituality. There's a translation recently I was reading. I've forgotten the translation. Oh, God, help me. Help me. Help me. It's a translation I was reading. And the way he interposed um, spirituality with maturity. Very interesting. He had to do with being motioned by the Spirit. He, in, he replaced being motioned by the Spirit, I think the passion, with being matured. See? That means your maturity is how the Holy Spirit can influence you. That's maturity. How much of the Holy Spirit influences your choice? Influence your decision, influence where you are, influence the things you are doing. Spirituality. People are religious. That's the prayer, fasting, and all that. But they are not spiritual. Because I think that if you are spiritual, prayer, fasting will show different people. Do you know in Ghana, we are about 50 something, are we 50 something or 60% Christians? What? Ghana, 70% Christians. No, it's around 60. It's not up to 70. No. But there's corruption in this country. And it's not unbelievers doing it. It's Christians doing corruption. That's, the, that's what I'm saying. We are religious. So it's the religious margin of 60-something percent. But the spiritual margin is lower. The people who really practice the God they serve. By this time of your Christian life, you are arguing that alcohol is not a sin. You have lost your... Is it rubble? What did they say? There's an English word. Who speaks that English? That somebody speaks that says English. Your, rub, your scruples. You have lost your scruples. Of all the things you argue about, whether alcohol is a sin or not, because you want to keep a bar in your house. <laughs> it, it, no, it tells a lot. Reason why hell is advancing fast because they are absolute. They are absolute for sin. We are not absolute for God. Can you imagine? What do alcohol do for you? That is so sweet you can't give up. Even God is saying that it's not even the alcohol I'm looking for. That your food you eat, I don't want you to love it more than me. Even your necessary food, God said, I must be esteemed more than it. Is it alcohol you are not come to argue? Come on. Come on. It's what? 71%. That is there. Wow. I'm shocked. So 71% of this country are Christians. Hey. Shabado. <laughs> <laughs> but see what is happening in the country and see the amount of churches that are around why are we not producing kingdom men why are we not producing giants of God yeah half of the people that go to church on Sunday are the same people that go to the club on Friday yeah 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 on the club yeah and the one my daughter said even saw a prophet in the club yeah Evangelism. <laughs> all right, all right. Who am I to judge? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Evangelism it is. Evangelism it is. <laughs> Apostolic invasion. Friendship with God. The goal of spirituality is being friendly with God, being God's friend. No, when you are God's friend, eh, God uses her. That's why he came in Isaiah and said, Look to Abraham. He said, look to Abraham. God said it to him. He said, look to Abraham, the rock from when you were cut out. That means that there are men God puts as markers. And he puts them as the fabric. You see, we say husband material. This is friendship material. God can cut you and say, everybody who will serve me, they should look at you. Because you have learned how to mimic friendship with me. When he said, look to Abraham, it's because he was God's friend. That's why he said, it's not everybody God says, look to. God's friend. Hallelujah. Are we here? Are you loving the word? Are you sure of that? So the moment God becomes your friend, I'll show you a secret today. This wisdom key, I want you to mark it down. Proverbs 19 verse 21, go there. Proverbs 19 verse 21. Rabone estevar hasporatosh falhamberebe. There are many devices in the man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord shall stand. Passion translation. What does it say? A person may have many ideas concerning God's plans for his life, but only the designs of his purpose will succeed in the end. That means that, ladies and gentlemen, in all you're getting, go for hearing God than doing for God. In simple terms, 
choose guidance over power. Choose the ability to hear his voice over anointing. He. Okay. You see, Samson was anointed, but he lost his hearing capacity. He lost it. Speed is only an advantage when you know where you are going. Go, you don't know where you are going, but you have speed. You are wasting life. Yeah. yeah. So why are you tall? Why do you have energy? Some of you have energy because God has created you like an energy storehouse. Perhaps your frame is designed such that you can carry people to fastings, come out of it, and you are an example God can use and say, this man can fast. This man can carry you to bush. He can do 30 days. He can do 50 days and still go to office. He uses you as an example. So even your design, if you don't hear why you have what you have, your speed and capacity will be wasted. 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 One of the things I like about Americans is that when you enter high school, as soon as they see your build, all the teachers have been cultured and informed. As soon as you see somebody who looks like a candidate for the NFL or basketball, send them to the PE teacher. So you enter the class, you are tall. Then all of a sudden, your class teacher who is teaching history goes like, do you play any sport? You say, no. All right, next thing you hear, PE master is looking for you. Yeah, in high school or in grade, whatever it is. And when you, or junior high, and by the time you realize, they have begun to groom you. So you didn't know how to play basketball. At a 16, you started learning it. But in Ghana, we have so many Alongons that are wasting their destiny. They are blackboard cleaners. <laughs> The toilets in class, they are used to clean blackboard. <laughs> Nobody suggests you for any sport. Look at how long your legs are. You should have been suggested for high jump. And, 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 and what do you call it? Uh, 400 meters. But they just wasted your talent. You, it would have never been wasted in America. I'm telling you. They can even see your body structure and suggest to you that you can do wrestling. And your class teacher who is teaching you mass will go and mention your name to the wrestling coach. Yes. Yes. No, I'm not talking of WWE. I'm talking of <laughs> Olympic wrestling. I'm talking of Olympic wrestling. That's what I'm talking about. Are you here with me? Are you sure you're here? Yeah. Go for guidance. Please, go for guidance. The shocking thing about what I just said is that the anointing is at the guided place. The anoint when you go for the place where you are guided, you don't even have to pray for anointing. Anointing is waiting for you. Yeah. Have you played Mario before? Yeah, you can go path. There's some places if you pass, you, when you hit the thing, it will be rock. Yeah. But there's some places when you pass, when you hit it, cook food. Go food, then you are growing. That means there are some places when God guides you. He says he leads you in the path of righteousness. He leadeth you beside still waters. That means when God guides you, power, peace, tranquility, prosperity, provision, green waters and green pastures, and waters that are cool and calm for you are already waiting for you. In guidance. You live a rested life. I'm going to preach on rest so you can understand the power of guidance. A lot of you are not guided. That's why you are still where you are. He said, It's God's counsel that shall stand. That means that anytime you are not guided, you are going against God's will. That's why the journey becomes horrible. You must know where you are going. Then speed is an advantage. You must know where you are going. Then speed is an advantage. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Are you here? Yeah. I'm showing you instructions for life. Go for guidance. So one of the first prayers you have to pray is, Lord, what is your will about this matter? Don't just get a guy. What's your will? No, this cobra thing is a serious matter. Huh? <laughs> hey. I told you I'll do legalities part three. Eh? I will show you in that teaching that there are some people, when you date them, you think you have dated a wrong guy and you broke up. But it was an operation from hell that since the day you dated them, you will never marry again. Yes. Especially if you have intercourse with them. You are done. You are done not because, listen, I said the operation is that once you encounter such a person, you are finished. I told you the story of Dinah. Jacob said, don't befriend them. 
They say, oh, they are my friends. They are not bad people. You know, I'm a teenager. I need people my age with. And, you know? And she was there so not knowing she came out an idea. She ripped, he ripped uh, what he had in her hair. Then after raping her, he himself lost his life. And do you know that nobody in Israel was ready to marry Dinah? Because she's a raped woman. And if you know the Israelites, hey, Jesus Christ. In Israel, when you give birth to a blind child, it is a product of adultery. Yes. That's why when they came in John 9, they said, who sinned? I will show you in legalities that the people Jesus, in fact, let me show you a story today. When the woman committed adultery and was caught in the act, John 8, Jesus told her, go and sin no more. Let something great come. He said, go, I condemn you not. Go and sin no more. That's what he says. He said, I condemn you not. Go and sin no more. John 8. Then when you come to John chapter 5, there was a man at the pool of Bethsaida. He healed the man. Do you know the shocking thing about it? After healing the man, he vanished. And the man went to town. They said, who healed you? He said, I don't know. A man said, oh, I got get up. I was healed. Do you know what happened? Later in the evening, Jesus went to the temple just for the guy. And when he met the man, he says, go and sin no more. All the people he said, go and sin no more, according to rabbinic writings, got their sin by adultery. So the man was sick for 38 years because of adultery. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Proper living. You dare, your flap is automatic magnet. It, it opens, you don't even, huh, Jesus Christ. The Lord, no, 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 no. I'm telling you something. God opened my eyes to see what this generation is suffering from. We are supposed to break. Our generation is under the highest attack because God designed us to bridge a gap. The ones coming are supposed to be Solomon. We are the David generation. But we too, we don't understand. And our passions are acting. Do you know how Noah was chosen? He was not righteous physically. Hey, um, in his actions. He was righteous physically. He had no physical defect. That's why he was chosen. That means that even some of us say, God will use us, but there's an extent he can't use us because of certain things we are touching. If you're also touching it, I'm not saying God can't use you. God is saying that if, as long as you keep touching this thing, you can't let me use you fully. So if you used to touch it or you touch it last night, stop! So he can use you well. Abba! Oh... <laughs> and, then, and then you know the shocking thing after all of that to you let Satan come and plant envy in your heart why is God using this person why are their voice going farther than mine you, you, you just did touching yesterday <laughs> father help my generation no 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 you have no idea what I bleed, I bleed for some of us we are like Jeremiah yeah. God gives us grace to see for our generation. Not personal prophecy. I'm talking of the state of our generation and the way God will succeed us. God will, God will bring a next move. Some of you are dangerous prophets and apostles and Satan saw it from your mother's womb. So they instigated attacks against your life. So till now, there are things in your head you can't let go. That's why God can use you more. But if you ever allow yourself the kind of power you will display, the world has nothing to see. Catherine Kumane, Wonderful woman of God. Apparently, her life that we celebrate is about the last 14 to 13 years of her life. Because she, went, she had a wrong marriage, all kinds of things. So the Catherine Kuma we celebrate was her last 13 years. That's what I'm saying. It's not too late for you. The problem is that your mind has locked you that you are useless. These things are dying, my friend. Let it, let, there's nothing God can do. Is there is your body not doing you. Is there that thing when you are there, it's like a starting. Like, so you see a young man come, daddy, I, I don't want to lip read because when I see the girls, when I see the girls. <laughs> but the Lord is ever ready to use an available vessel. Look, I, I preach a message recently, I told them something. In a great house, huh, are many vessels, right? What scripture is that? Chapter 2, what? Verse 1. Huh. So in a great house are many vessels. Some to honor, some to dishonor. Now can you go to 2 Timothy chapter 2, 20, 21. Quickly, quickly. See what he said. I'll show you something very powerful. I know you've read this many times, but I want to show you something that will, will, will open your spirit up. In a great house, there are, only, there are not only vessels of gold. They are fashion translations. See what he says. Ah, ah, I love this one. 
I love what he said in passion. In a palace, you will find many kinds of containers and tableware for many different uses. Some are beautifully inlaid with gold or silver, but some are made of food, of earthenware. Some of them are used for banquets, special occasions, and for everyday use. Next, 21. But you, Timothy, must you not see life and ministry this way. Your life and ministry must not be disgraced. You are to be pure container of Christ, dedicated to the honorable purposes of your master, prepared for every good work. Now, that's powerful. But I want you to go to the King James. The way he personalized it here, I love it. But I want to show you how King James put it. He says, if a man therefore shall pet himself. He didn't say, if a man therefore shall change himself. So he's not saying that in the great house, become a gold vessel. He said, Pedge. That means if a gold vessel is dirty, God will avoid it and go for a wooden cup. The condition is the purging, not the quality of vessel. Yeah. So you can be very anointed, gifted, but there's filth. God will avoid you. And go for somebody who didn't go to school and give him everything. And you're like, ah, but they are not learning it. Why are they getting it? Pedge. To be a vessel unto Anna. Sanctified, meet for the master's use, and prepare for every good work. He didn't say change. So the wood can be used and the gold will be avoided. Mm. That's why you see in our generation, God has left a lot of good voices and he's using hoarse voices. Because people have trusted their sweet voice more than their anointing. And those who don't have their sweet voice are trusting their anointing. Oh, yo, yo, oh, oh, oh. So chant, everybody can chant. Yeah. Are you here with me? Praise God. Somebody say I'll be spiritual from today. I'll measure things spiritually. First Corinthians chapter 2 says that the spiritual man judges all things. Verse 13. Spiritual man judges all things. There's nothing that will pass by a spiritual man. He said, aha, 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 aha. Compare spiritual things. And verse 15 says that he that is spiritual judges all things because he himself is not what judge. Nothing happens in your life for fun. You judge everything. What point have I given you so far? Three. Point number four. Go for the word. Go for the word. I said go for wisdom. Check your spirituality or go for spirituality. Choose guidance over power. If you've listened to Paul's Pentecost, you'll hear that in the teaching I said guidance is actually an operation of power. When the power is low, your direction will be limited. Hey, you are using Google Maps and your battery starts beeping. Low battery, low battery. You say Google Maps will not talk to you again. Because he said he has to preserve power. So when your power is low, your guidance is fluctuated. You have struggles in your guidance. How do you remember I said that? Spiritual control. I said one of the first actions of power is leading. When God's power is alive in you, you are led. You can be led. And I'm saying to you also that go for spirituality. The Lord must be your shepherd so that you don't want. He didn't say you don't need. You don't want. You don't want means that the day God is truly your shepherd, a car is good, but you don't want. You need it, but you don't want it. The moment needs become want, idolatry has started. You need the wife, yes, to fulfill certain assignments in your life, procreation, children, all those things. Your arrow, your quiver is full of arrows. You need a wife to do that. You need a husband for that. But the moment that need becomes a want, it means the Lord is not a shepherd. Did you hear what I said? That means that the way you can measure whether the Lord is your shepherd is the way where you can see certain things and you don't desire it. You desire the Lord rather. When every day you see a car, you like it. You see a phone, you like it. And you can, you can go down, Google it. The dimension, Kai, this thing, if I get it. You have never done that for Jesus Christ. Never. That the thing prophet was preaching today, hey, Jesus, can you come to my house? And it's like you wanted the Lord. If you don't want the Lord more than any other thing, he has not yet been your shepherd. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You want a job. And that's what will make you fulfilled. You have lost it. You must want the Lord. That's where fulfillment is. 
A job will not fulfill you. It will satisfy you. And the moment it satisfies you, after two years, you want promotion. And after promotion, when it's not enough, you want to change your job. Do you know why people change, enter a job after six weeks they want to change satisfaction? They are not operating in fulfillment. So, ah, uh, prophet, I've been here, but I don't feel, I feel empty. I say, are you not the one praying for this job? You were like, this job, if you get it, everything, hey, hey, night has come. Why are you not happy here? Do you understand? <laughs> it means you are pretty at satisfaction. And when you are you looking for satisfaction, nothing satisfies. Except the Lord. The Lord is my portion. I shall not want. The Lord is the portion of my inheritance. I have a goodly heritage. That's how I operate. Whatever is the Lord is mine. So when I'm in the plane, I'm looking for the Lord. I told you today, I told you some time ago, wisdom. When you enter a plane, don't watch film. It's waste of brain power. Please. Go and Google it yourself in neuroscience. Apparently, altitude affects your brain chemistry. You can retain things faster. You don't even need co coffee in the altitude. You can read better. And you just go, Netflix, one, two. Then you say, I was traveling to America, 18 hours, and I watched seven films. Well done. I'm not saying watching a film is bad, but don't waste your brain power. And just binging, sleeping, binging. Then every two minutes, can I get coke? <laughs> can I get tea? Do you have bread? <laughs> then you see them in BA. I, I, I had your mother need your love fries a crowd. Then, oh, jai, 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 jai. I didn't have monkey to me. That's how Ghanaians talk in the play. And sometimes you have to pretend like you don't know what they are saying. Come on, more on your car, Then you are sitting by her. You don't smile because can't you smile? Eh? Eh? I will laugh. Oh no. <laughs> we went to a certain country and <laughs> a lady was just walking, walking, walking. I think I forgot the country, it was Asia. But it was just walking, walking, walking. The other of a sudden, I think you had me and mommy talking gun. And when you saw us talking, I said, Aha! Aha! Nimba be gonna be out. It's not gonna be. One week, ne, down in China, be here, here, and they can, so finally, that's why you make friends you don't want to make. <laughs> that's because of the same dialects. So when I travel, I keep quiet. <laughs> I will never speak local language. Me. Hey. I don't even know who you are. What are your broken record? That's how I just make myself. For now, send the moon and I'm no. We are gonna anyone. Oof, The whole flight, you will not read again. After you open the book, ah, oh, can't buy a book. You're so far now. Ah, bumpire, mommy. The problem in here. Okay. <laughs> Are you heavy? Yeah. And listen to what I'm saying. Please put them. Go for the word. Point number four. Go for the word. Go for the word. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 4, the verse 20, it says, incline your ears to my words. Proverbs 4.20, incline, it's attend to my words. Go to the passion, incline your ears unto my sayings. He said, listen carefully, my dear child, to everything that I teach you. Pay attention to all that I have to say. Now this word, pay attention, is a word that was used in James chapter 1, the verse 24 and 25. James 1, 24, 25. He says, there are some people, when they hear the word of God, they don't pay attention. Because you see, he said, behold, he beholdeth himself and goeth away. And straightway forgetteth what manner of man he is. Verse 25. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty. Do it in Passion Translation for me. And continue therein. But those who set their gaze deeply into the perfecting law of liberty are fascinated. They set their gaze. They are fascinated. And respond to the truth they hear. Are straightened by it. They experience God's blessing in order they do. That means lack of fascination with scripture is the scripture that will never bless you. When the scripture does not fascinate you, it's going to your head to never do anything in your life. Proverbs 4, 20. 21 says what? Well, see what he says, verse 21. Oh my God. I think I'm having this feeling of Paul going to Troas. You know? Okay. And he said, the door was open, but Titus was not with me. So Paul abandoned Troas and rather came to Titus. I feel that thing. Mom, what kind of Bible? Yeah. Some people are just smiling. like, what's he talking about? <laughs> Is there trust in the Bible? <laughs> you don't even know there's trust in the Bible. Oh, finish the Bible. Finish the Bible. 
He said, now go back to King James. Can we go back to King James? See what he said? See what he said? See what he says? Oh, King James, King James. Sorry. Passion. You know what I'm saying, right? Yeah, passion. Fill your thoughts with the words until they penetrate deep into your spirit. That means that going for the word is the protocol by which you meditate. Meditate on the word. Let me tell you something. The Bible says in Isaiah that we all as sheep have gone astray. We all as sheep have gone astray. So, biblically speaking, even the judgment of Revelation 20, we are sheep that will be separated from goats, unbelievers. Say, I'm a sheep. I'm a sheep. The Lord is my shepherd. Lord is my if shepherd. the Lord is a shepherd, he didn't say the Lord is your president. <laughs> he didn't say the Lord is your chief. He said the Lord is your shepherd. That means if the Lord is your shepherd, he's seeing you as sheep. Now, the sheep is led by the shepherd beside still waters. And in the place of green pastures. Now listen to this. So when the sheep now goes here, the health of the sheep is dependent on the capacity to ruminate. Rumination is actually the definition of a healthy ruminant. So any sheep or goat that cannot chew the card is unhealthy. In fact, the Bible says in Leviticus chapter 11 that every creature that splits the hoof and can chew the card is clean. It means your cleansing is only activated at meditation. If you don't meditate on the things you are... Have you noticed Christians come to church? They listen to powerful revelations and nothing changes in their life. Lack of meditation. I'm telling you, that's why you'll be playing soon, soon, pair. Oh, na ma ye me re. You don't understand why. Because your spirit is willing, but your flesh is weak. Why? You are hearing no, but you are deceived. The deception of it is what makes you call yourself a wretched person. Because all you do, you are hearing the revelation. Wow, Charlie, the man of God, they preach. Wow, Charlie, serious. Wow. Guy, preach it be a same use of dish now. I didn't have a crown working. So that's how you are listening to me. <laughs> yeah, you are just listening like that. You are just fascinated. But it only enters your spirit by meditation. The longest distance on earth is here to your heart. Some of you have heard stories from childhood. It still not entered your heart what the Bible was actually saying. Up to now. Because you think that it will happen one day by somebody talking to you. No. It will happen the day you sit down and say, Lord, open the scriptures to me. And tell me what you were talking about with Daniel. What you were talking about with David. You know, I was doing a research on the king's portion. I was doing a research on the king's portion. A man of God, what I shared here, God showed me further. Because I even added research. Apparently, Daniel was a eunuch without losing his gonads. No, that word is not too good for television. Yes, yes. Oh, what do you think? His gonads. Yes. King James calls his stones. I said, a priest must not lose his stones. <laughs> the ladies are confused. It's good. Another lady is Googling, what is gonad? <laughs> now, what is happening now is this, that. Listen, what the scripture is trying to tell us in the days of Daniel was, when I went to do an investigation, even historical writers and the rest, apparently, why even Daniel said for 10 days they should be free? Daniel 1 8 told the eunuch. He was a chief eunuch. That means that in context, the chief eunuch was responsible for making eunuchs. Are we together? He says, therefore, he requested the prince, not the, the prince of the eunuch, that he might not defile himself. Now, when you check it well, now you understand that. He told him, verse 9, that he didn't want the king's portion of his meat. Now, the Bible also says, sir, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of the word, the Lord. Now, this prophetic teaching, that I went to use history to check. So when I went to check, apparently Daniel still had his gonads intact. They didn't castrate him. In fact, it was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego plus Daniel. They were not castrated. But the difference was that, apparently, what Daniel was telling them was that, 
the favor he got was that in their culture, when they castrate a man, he has no passion for women. He becomes focused on any instruction he's given. Because they are teenage boys. They will not run to town to go and have fun. Their castration gives them no desire except for the assignment they are given. But Daniel apparently, sir, that's why if you check it well, you realize that this action was just for 10 days. So after 11 days, or the 12 days, Daniel was eating the king's portion. Is that what he's saying? No. When you also check the historical writings, there's a document I saw, and it says, apparently, sir, it took 10 days to castrate the men and put them on the rituals of becoming a eunuch. So what Daniel received was that, sir, we will come out after 10 days without going through your ritual and we will be better than your friends. So his gunners were intact, but the guy was sharper than those who have lost their gunners. That's why he got favor. Because if you check it scripturally, king's meat, king's food is the king's way. The king's words. The king's law. Meat. Jesus said, my meat is to do the will. So the will is the purpose, plan, counsel of the Lord. So the king's mood and the king's portion is the counsel or the method of the king. Because he said he married a lady called Susan. Susan is a Babylonian name. Shushan. Esther. Shushan. With your hands to Jesus Christ. <laughs> Edwin polluted me. It's Edwin. When I stood by him, I just heard the Enyang Wangwa in his heart. It's a prophetic word. I just speak it. He wanted to say it, so I said it for him. I'm the one holding the microphone. So I said. So I was very surprised at this text. I said, wow, that's powerful. Oh, powerful. Because the text said that not all eunuchs were castrated. And Daniel was part of the exemptions because of favor he got. What am I saying? If you don't go for the word by meditation, some things will not open up. The way you quickly read, it will not open up. This is not magic. It's not, hey, prophet is deep. All of us you can have it. You just don't get preoccupied with the thing. Get preoccupied with the scriptures. Be, just be preoccupied. Habakkuk is not difficult. It can open up. Songs can open up. Just be preoccupied. You get it like, whoa, this is what he's talking about. And that's it. That's it. You will just, you will link it with a short time. I was like, how, do I, how are you able to link scriptures? It's meditation. It's meditation. 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 So the health of a ruminant is in a meditation. That means that, can I tell you something? Your health, whether good or bad, is in meditation. Anything you are doing is a product of meditation. Eastern meditation empties the head. So Shintoism, Buddhism, Hinduism, when they start meditating, hmm, in a piece, in a piece, in a piece. So you are using your brain to push out things. That's Eastern religion meditation. You are trying to empty your head. But in spirit, true spiritual meditation, it's filling your head. I've said the Lord ever before me. We don't meditate out. We meditate on. We meditate on the word. So there's something you are picking and fixing it in your head. That's, that's biblical meditation. You are filling your head with scriptures. And I'm saying that that's the operation of spiritual living. So can I tell you something? All the habits you have, all the words you speak. All the things, I remember when I was young, in my teenage years, I had, you know, I went to a boys' school. So when we come on vacation, Kuforia said, take boys, Fijai boys, St. John's, no, Fijai was mixed. Fijai is mixed, eh? Yeah, so St. John's, St. John's was boys. So my boys, my friends from St. John's, GSTS, we all meet Presec, you know, in the area, you know. I'm a Christian, so everybody's trying to do rap, and I'm like, I'm doing Christian rap. 
So the guys are just rapping with cuss words, you know. But I'm just rapping good, nice words. Yeah. I got my what? <laughs> you know. Yeah, so we're, we're rapping. I'm serious. Yeah. Very powerful rap. Yeah, I used to, I used to rap, rap, right? To write my rap. And those I remember when, when we this thing Bishop has said it before. Yeah. Bishop sings, then I was doing the rap. Yeah. So then it starts, tum, tum, ta, ta, tum, tum, ta, da, so, oh, I, I was come to rap, but. <laughs> before people put it on their status. <laughs> This generation, I fear you. But I thought I realized oh, Ghana News, prophet of God, is rapping in church. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I was rapping. But I realized that I couldn't churn out those negative words about women, about, you know, all the mother insults and all those things. I couldn't do it because I was not meditating on it. Yeah. Those are the things I was like, I was not meditating on it, no. I wasn't. I was more of even Bob Marley than any of the rap people. Yeah. Play us some music. This a reggae music. Yeah. So. <laughs> Roots rock reggae. This a reggae. Conscious vibes, you know? So your spirit is naturally going for good words. So I remember those days, I used to like the, you know, we had the people called the underground rappers, Nostradamus. Yeah, there was people called Nostradamus then. Uh, what's his name? I've forgotten the guy's name. Yes, dangerous guys, underground people. Yeah, those people when they pick the mic, hey, rhymes, bass, uh, rap. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. People are going back to their former life. Let's stay in Zion before <laughs> my preaching takes you back to you. Someone has just begun to remember the club. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. What am I trying to say? Everything you are, everything you are saying, every word, every diction, the way you talk is a product of meditation. Look at your children. If you have children, look at yourself. If you have a mother or a father. There are things you do. You don't know how you knew it. But the same way you talk, you realize, that's how mommy talks. How come? There was a silent meditation. You kept seeing it. You kept thinking it. And the best way that operation worked for you was that this is how we talk. So a child will learn how to raise the voice when they're talking, ah, da, 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 because mommy does it. <laughs> so you go to a house, the, the decibel is higher than usual. Like, <laughs> oh, mom, it's like the talk is above. <laughs> and there's another family too. Cool, hello, how are you doing? Everything, yes, nice. When I went to infantry, for instance, they said it's on infantry to shout someone's name. Hey! They'll beat you for that. Pope Jones, did you, did you do that? They, you, when you shout someone, they'll beat you. Oh, your school, they did that. I didn't know Pope Jones, you are good though. So you poor, they rebuke you for shouting people's name. Yeah. You don't walk on grass. What school was that? What? At this school. At this school. Yeah, hey, my friend. When you shout, they'll beat you. In a disco. You are before the Lord. Say the truth, all the truth. Swear, swear. <laughs> a disco, boys. Please, please, please. Don't, don't mention that. This <laughs> Look, a disco, I know you people back in front of We were all in Cape Coast together. Stop that thing. I know you people. Any other person outside Cape Coast can lie, but Cape Coast boys, I know all of us. I know all of us. Amen. What am I trying to say? So because of that, you were trained not to raise your voice at a certain decimal. There's, you know, you don't do it. They call it on fans. It's on fans one. Like, why are you shouting? No. So that's what it looks like the boys are dull. Listen, some of us were harder than other schools. Oh, yeah. I'm telling you. When I went to St. Augustine's doing intercolleges at Adisco Park, I had my boys in Augustine's. We did martial arts from GSS. And they knew that because I'm in an infant uniform, I can't, so when they saw me, they're like this, then who, who, throw kick, hit me. Then I was like, they know I can't react. Because what I'm wearing, if I touch somebody, Hope Man will catch you. <laughs> Hope Man or Kumetia Man, they are waiting for you. Or El Tucci. <laughs> yeah, there was a certain Egyptian code, they are called El Tucci, they are there. 
In the fasting, they beat you for reacting to a, what do you call it? Provocation. They say it's not gentlemanly. Can you imagine a disco followed us? I think it was 98 or 99. Dr. Joe was telling me. They followed us to infancy, beat us in the school. When we reacted, they punished all of us for reacting. So it's not that we didn't have crazy guys. Yeah. The school, after three years, some, even if you are crazy, something about infancy will cool you down. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's not serious. It's not that we're not strong, no. Very dangerous. And as some of the boys, when I saw them, I would go to a disco and I would see some of these boys I could beat easily. Then they would say, hey, you know, if you do anything. Then I say, <laughs> 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 it's only there, it's where we are standing. And some of them today, what, there was this boy, slim boy like that, bony guy. He would just hit you, no, if you do anything. Then after I said, no, you go and sit with the disco boys. It's not those boys, they are ready to fight. Uh, they lack temperance. <laughs> And this, those are the, they lack them, Brazil. Oh, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. What am I trying to bring your mind to? The more you meditate. Meditation is a very interesting thing. I said every one of us meditates. But your meditation is a product of a substance. A guy who meditates on a lady and becomes so obsessed. It's meditation. She's always in front of you. Do you know why teenagers have pictures of people in their room? It's meditation. Every day they wake up, and they don't know that that thing we're doing, that me, I, thank God I didn't even do that thing. But you see, people wake up, they have Beyonce picture, they have a distant picture, and so every day they wake up, there's a lady in bikini on their wall. It's a meditation. So by the time the person wants to marry, this is the specification I want. They don't know they've meditated themselves into a way of thinking. That means that every human being can come to the place where the word of God is the only intelligence they have. If it's not before you, forget it. It's a looking unto Jesus. I have set the Lord before me. If you don't set the Lord before you, the image of God, you'll be, something else is taking your image. Something is, your reactions are a product of a lot of things. Ghanaians had a good marriage till we started watching telenovela. Amondo, and now, 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 that's when now women began to say, I want, you hear women who are spiritual, who love the Holy Ghost. My husband should have a six pack and a big chest. Meanwhile, to all these things are acquired. They are acquired. Because Don Pedro is bare chested in jeans and wearing a cowboy hat. And, and, and you, you understand? And the lady will hug him and put her hand on the chest and say, ah. Is it a cocoa that will take you to heaven? Is it broad chest that will take you to Zion? So because of that, it has changed. A lot of you think that there's a uh, prophet. I'm not saying don't be show, don't exhibit chivalry, but I'm trying to say that watch what has informed that chivalry. Watch it. Because it's the things you keep putting before you. Alejandro. <laughs> no, look at the things you have put before you. Look at it. Ladies and gentlemen, God has called you to a certain place. The word of God must be premium. Meditate on it all the time. When you wake up in the morning, have a scripture in your mind. In the, look, there was a time, as you, we had Bibles in our pockets. We had Bibles and Gideons. Hey, it was a proud thing to have. Like, I was in Kenya recently, and a young man who works with the, I think he's in charge of the youth capacity development, and Kenya has a ministry called, a department called Faith Diplomacy. So the department is called the Department of Faith Diplomacy. So this young man came to look for me in my hotel, and he was mentioning my name, you know, so he just took his phone out and showed the flyer of me. So when I entered the hotel, some of the staff came to me, smiling. And they said, I just heard you were prophets. Do you know how they introduced themselves? My name is so so and so, I'm born again. I was shocked. No, so in Kenya, if you are born again, it's part of your introduction. My name is Adam Julius Kujo, I'm born again. Like from the onset, I'm born again. It's not, I'm hiding it. I'm, I was so impressed. I said, my God, my God. So the lady said, my name is so and so I'm born again. Then they started telling me what it is they want me to help them with. Yes. 
I like the way you are thinking. Reevaluate your life. Hmm? <laughs> all the places you introduce yourself, and you, <laughs> of all the things you said you are, you omitted your salvation. But the day must come when you greet somebody, my name is Adam, I'm born again. Nice to meet you. I'm born again. That's enough. Meditate on the word. When you came to my office when I was working with government, anytime you opened my, my, every time they came, they knew I was not watching a movie. Every time my secretaries came, they saw I was watching a, a sermon. So a certain day, I think Mr. Sefa went to, there's the, one of my, sec, the ladies who was a secretary in the place I was, the finance department. She is now an administrator at a college, is it? College of Surgeons, yes. So he went there and said, ah, what ministry, who is your pastor? Mention he said, Adam, oh, I know him. I know you, pa. Oh, those days I knew that he was not fit for the government way. We saw that he was a pastor. So, <laughs> with that side, it is so, it's always like that. If I fail, they'll say, ah, we knew it. <laughs> he was chasing girls. <laughs> because I'm doing what they say, I knew him. That. Yeah, but nevertheless, when he said, I said, Jesus Christ. If I chase any national service girl, they would have told him that. Hey, he's like, tie up. Is he still okay? Because <laughs> those days, he used to be the small small girls, no? Yeah, nice. No national service girl can come and point and say, I, I toasted them. For what? <laughs> Toast is the Nigerian word for, you know, what's in a pet? Yes. I didn't, I didn't come to toast any girl. Business is business. My job is to post you to your department. It's not to have your number. If you are a man here, Learn sense. I'm coming to show you something about appetite. No, I, I just told you a story. I have to be somewhere, but the message I'm preaching, you need it more. You need, I'm serious. You need it more. You need it more. If you're a man here and a nice lady comes to your presence, you don't have to take a number. It tells that you lack gravity and vision. Because she's nice, you must take a number. Are you... <laughs> Every, because the person is nice and they say hello to you can I have your number for what for what and Satan has realized that ah, this man they will send you spirits very soon yeah underworld entities you will be shocked because you have a weakness for nice girls unless it's not nice then you master niceness. Then now anything. Anything is scared you. Okay. Very soon God will bless you for a car. When you are driving, you see a nice girl like, then you roll your, no, that operation, I've, I've, I've have a problem with it. I told God that when I enter my 50s, I think I have to be a, village, a vigilante. Then I'll be driving and see a girl, and the guy is in the corner, and then, one day I told my mom, I said, Mama D, he's lying, he's lying. So one day I rolled the glass out, oh, Chantro. And Mama D said, oh, oh, oh. I said, let me tell him, he's lying. And then toasting that you are in the corner, it's a lie, it's a lie. If it is true, why are you in the corner? As in the castle, you know, you know, it's a lie. I feel like 10, 50 years old, I'll cause trouble in this country. I'll just have a K in my car. <laughs> Stop lying to the girl. <laughs> Stop lying to the girl. Ah. Eh? Future pastor's wife, future president's wife. Missing them out. Get ready, I have a college for men. No, very soon I'm going to establish a college for men. You have to pass through it before you marry anybody. Yes. In fact, you have to pass through it before you can tell me that you, you've seen somebody you like. Yes. No, we have to invest. No, some of you are causing problems with the girls. You are there, you are chatting them. I miss you, I miss you. And, 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 and women move with the flow of words. Even me as a pastor, I control how I converse with my daughters. Yes. Every day I'm talking to one daughter. I'm going to create a problem. I control it. Every day, one daughter, hello, hello have you? It's like, so the lady feels like her whole life is you. No, control it. I'm your father. Don't say, don't say, I'm So all of them are quiet. Badiki tapayasa. 
<laughs> Go for the word. Meditate. 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 Stop writing lyrics. Meditate. Meditate. Let me tell you the truth today. Can I tell you something? Nothing you like was default. Let me explain something to you. If you understand the psychology of upbringing, they are think, you know some children, when you give birth to them, they like classicals. Some like 80s, old school songs. Some of them is not how they came. It is what they met. There was either a grandmother, a grandfather, something that linked them to such type of songs. Nobody came. Everyone came with fresh slate. That means that everything you are, everything you like, is an acquired taste. If it is acquired taste, nobody was born a prayer machine. We all acquired it. So don't say me, the prayer is not my own. Who told you it's, it's our own? <laughs> nobody has prayer as their own. We all learned it. Nobody has fasting as their own. We all learned it. Shit, what is fasting in the war? <laughs> Even after all this fasting, sometimes you can be fasting and share. When you remember, someone like can win, like, oh, <laughs> me, I preach to you about Isuano. The reason why I know the effect of Isuano is that when I'm fasting, I can smell the Isuano too. <laughs> <laughs> so when I'm telling you that when it's fasting that you hear, you, your ears become extra sensitive. You are in a bus, but all of a sudden you can hear 100 meters away. <laughs> Eyes, a swallow, yoga, 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 and your ears are picking it. And, and you, are, you are looking out, where is the yoga seller? And everybody says, I don't see him. You're like, I, I can hear him. <laughs> Even at my age, in fasting, sometimes your appetite are high. <laughs> so when we are doing paya, 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 you think, you think, you think it's because we, are, we like it. No, it's an acquired taste. Acquired, and we have learned that the flesh will never support fasting, the flesh will never support prayer. Sometimes you carry gallons of anointing from a previous one, so the next one becomes easier. But when you give two or three months, then when you are starting again, you said that things work. It's work. <laughs> <laughs> So when we start Tuesday, don't say that, oh, we are not used to fasting. We are all not used to it. We are all not used to it. Hey. hey. We are all not used to it. If anything at all, even we as the pastors, we should rather be exempted. exempted. Because I've come from a trip. I came to preach. I should rest my body so that I can have energy to lead the next one. But I have to start fasting before you start. I have to start my fast. Because I'm the one come to lead you. And I'm starting with you. No, we all struggle. I have to take the lead. So by the time I pick you up, we are all going. Pata, scopaya. We are going. And when we are done, I continue. Because when we, when we are ending 14th, is it 20? Then we are starting 27th again. 13 days difference, my friend. <laughs> you are not happy. We are fasting again, no? Oh? When we end 14th, we are fasting again 27th. It is a covenant we have with God. Listen, one of the things you should never... <laughs> oh, my God, you know, sir. It's not every source you'll be negotiating faster. Here, you cut faster now. Like material for suit. We'll cut the fast in seven years. <laughs> Are you here? <laughs> I do be. And some of you don't even know. If God opens you, you say, these fast things you are calling, after every fast, you will bring me a seed. You say, Prophet, the, the fast you have been doing, the things that happened to me, some of you, God has healed you from some sicknesses. Since the time you mentioned that that problem left you, there's a lady who has been coming to Ephesus. She was in America, and she joined a prayer meeting online. And apparently, she had a problem with her colon. I think you know that story. She shared it the first time. A colon, and she couldn't hold her own um, um, bar, incontinence or bowel. It's not we, we, oh. The one that comes from the back. <laughs> a woman. You see, every time she's walking in public, she's smelling. Because something has come. And God stopped it. Because he said, it was a Zoom meeting. I said, take water, drink it. Bah, it ended. So it's not that it's, there are some things God has delivered you from. Sometimes God has not given you the job. But you can see that now you are thinking well. You are not afraid of life again. Anxiety has left you. All these are products of fasting. Products of fasting. I'm sure during the fast, I'll be having some special episodes. I'll show you how to fast well. 
When you are fasting, you say eat food fast. Don't go and eat Uncle Chadia 7. Uncle Chadia is lying wrong. No, that's not what I'm saying. Some of you, when you are fasting, we say fruit. You eat seven oranges, 18 bananas and granite. Yes, that's why after that you are bloated. And you don't understand. The, let, let, you get gas. Let me tell you something. When you are fasting, there are some fruits you eat for fast. Popo, mango, and watermelon. They don't, put, they don't put pineapple on empty stomach. You will gas. Stop it. That's why some of you are like, when I eat fruit, I'm struggling. It's what you are putting in the system. You have to have knowledge for it. Even banana is an antioxidant. And it has a high level of sugar. They don't load seven bananas. Some of you, when they say you fruit fast, you wipe 50 Ghana bundle. One, two, three, four. Now your stomach is doing. How will you pray? <laughs> Granite based. <laughs> I just say, why are you pimping cat and pen when you Granite and banana. I'm bad doing your cook. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yeah. Everything must be done. Sometimes you have eat the Holy Ghost say, hey, brah. There's not one small fruit fast we can do. That's why you rather after fruit fast, you not reduce, you rather increase. Because you are overloading sugar, so the body is storing the fructose. It's padding. So when you wake up, your stomach is still bloated after fruits. It's watermelon, watermelon there because it's watery. You can drink. Drink it hard. <laughs> I'm just saying, it's a watermelon, dear. It doesn't have weight. <laughs> Look, if you fast well, eh, you don't get tired, you have more energy. Yeah. You, don't, you don't get tired, you get more energy because as you are fasting, well, the energy increases. When I'm fasting dry, I'm telling you, when I'm fasting dry, I remember scriptures faster. Yeah. Ah, some of the online we were doing January and all February, I was in a dry fast. So, yeah, the energy is of course is, is destroying adipose cells. It's sub, the ad, energy in adipose layer is higher than any carbohydrate you can eat. <laughs> Meditate on the word. Meditate on the word. Meditate on, please give yourself to it. Don't give yourself to the word. Give yourself, Paul said in, in the book of Timothy, First Timothy, he said, give yourself wholly to these things that your profiting might appear to all men. Give yourselves wholly. Give yourself, if you don't give yourself wholly to these things, there'll be a problem. Your profit is only a product of a whole surrender, not partial, whole, whole. Some of you are reading the Bible here, arguing with God. Now, God, this one, I don't agree. Why, why will you do something like this? Hey! <laughs> Look at you. You are arguing with God, the all-knowing one. Instead of you to ask him, the Lord, what does this mean? You are saying this one, I don't agree. That's why you are not going anywhere. Give yourself wholly to these things. Holy, holy. Whatever the word of God says, I agree. And Lord, show me how to live. The next one, exercise your spirit. Your spirit must be exercised. One of the things that causes a lot of people's depression is an unexercised spirit. You see, sometimes if you feel dull, you are, you are coming to church, or you are praying, you are in meetings, you are reading your Bible in the morning, morning devotion, you do it, you watch messages. Life is boring. It's an unexercised spirit. Your spirit must be exercised. Paul said to Timothy, in the same first Timothy, he said, exercise yourself rather to godliness. Exercise yourself rather to godliness. Exercise yourself rather to godliness. Exercise thyself rather unto godliness. So it's an exercise of your spirit. And how do you exercise your spirit? I'll show you a simple trick. I'll show you a simple trick. After setting the times for your normal prayer and Bible reading, Create times of the leadings of the spirit to pray and to read. Let me repeat what I said. That means I wake up at five. According to my schedule, I read the Bible for one hour. 
Six o'clock, I'm down. I pray for 30 minutes. I go to work. In the day, I have to create opportunities for the Holy Ghost to say, Adam, go and stand here. Don't eat today. Go and pray. I have to now wake up as I'm going to the office. I'm fellowship with the Lord. Then the Lord says, don't eat lunch today. Today is not part of it. And I didn't plan that I won't eat lunch. Because I'm already at the workshop. And there's buffet. But the Holy Ghost says, don't eat lunch today. I know why. If I heed the spirit, I've exercised my spirit. Do you know what has happened? That exercise of the spirit has made my spirit stronger than the religious activities. But if I just follow religious activities, I'm praying all right. I'm fasting all right. But a lot of it is determined by me. So the energy is not at its full frequency. Listen to what I'm saying very well. How to exercise your spirit. It's a rare thing. For instance, so some people have, I pray from 10 to 11. Beautiful. But sometimes after 11, the spirit doesn't want to stop. That one you continue when he's continuing is the exercise. Because now what you are doing to your spirit is that you are operating at a pace that is not convenient. So your spirit is stretched beyond what you've normally planned. That's the one you are driving. Holy Ghost says, start speaking in tongues. Put up the radio, speak in tongues. That's exercise. The exercise of the spirit is not necessarily you starting all the time. No. When you start it, it's according to, it's like, let me give you an example. Who has gone to the gym before? One about the other. Uh -huh. Lawrence. Come here, mouse up there. Are you cool them? Mouse up there. Kello. Answer. Okay, yes. Shamo, you also go to gym? Uh, okay. So, all of us have gone to gym before. The first time I went to gym was Katanga. No, is it Katanga or after SS? My area gym, one of them. But, Area gym, you are just gymming normal. But when I went to university first year, sir, I went to Mojo. When I went with my friend. When he went, he gave him a certain weight to pull. When I went, he, did, he said, my weight is small. My body style, I need heavy, heavier weight. I can pull heavier. Because apparently he knew that my bone density is larger than my friends. So he gave me heavier weight. So I started pulling the thing heavier. So I realized that every time I go to the gym, there's a weight I can push. There's a normal weight I can bench, bench press or incline bench press, whatever it is. So from time to time when I go to gyms, I test to see where my capacity is. Are you understand what I'm saying? But I realize that there's a place of a proper gym routine that can build muscle. And sometimes it is increased weight and increased reps. Sometimes it is maintain weight, but increase the reps. So if I do 20, pa, 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 and it's easy for me, it doesn't work. I know Schwarzenegger said something in his bodybuilding career. He said, when I start feeling the pain, that's when I start counting. So it means when you start to push out, pa, 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 pa. When the lactose acid starts building up and you start feeling ache in your muscles, that's when you start doing one, two. Those ones, when you start feeling the ache, that's where muscle has started building. That's why when you pray, ten minutes of prayer, you will fall. <laughs> Every temptation will still flow you because you have not yet built muscle. It is your usual ten minutes. It's easy. That's the one that when you come to all night, you know that without stress, you can do it. So some of you from the churches you come from, when they give prayer topic, five minutes, you can go. Let's pray about this. You see, kapa, oh yeah, kapa. <laughs> After five minutes, you are looking at the pastor. Won't he change the topic? <laughs> Seven minutes, ten minutes, you are like, hey. <laughs> so you are not looking at your prayer again. You are not looking at the man of God. Is he not going to stop? <laughs> so by the time you realize, 15 minutes, the man is not stopping. You are like, hey. So now you stop praying. You are wondering, <laughs> what kind of people are these? Is it only him? But the members too are serious. Oh. So next thing you realize, the person is now doing prayer, sleep work. The one that shows that they have given up is that they'll go and find a wall. <laughs> Your normal 10 minutes is gone. But if you stretch yourself alone one hour, when we come, that's the, those are the people when we say, in the name of Jesus, they are now You have to say, in the name of Jesus. They are gone. But all of those people, you ask them, how are you having it easy? It is 
exercise of their spirit. The exercise of the spirit is usually a repair and a stretching beyond your normal routine. That's the one holiday you say, go to the bush, go and pray. That's an exercise. By the time you come back, church is not fasting, but God said, this week, fast. By the time it's time to fast, some spiritual things are easier for you because you have exercised your spirit. Then the exercise of the man's spirit. Recently, I was sharing with the workers about the exercise of the spirit are covenant practices that give some people capacity to hear God well. When you exercise your spirit well, your antennas are sharpened. There is nothing that will take you by surprise again in your life. Oh, yes. Nothing. That means that the person who will make you fall and go to hell, when they walk into a room, you know. So from the day, they will even try quality and say, no, I'll never save your number. I'll never. And they don't understand why you've not saved it. Because I know you. Before. He said, I saw you under the tree before you came. It's a product of exercise. He said, who by Hebrews 5 verse 14, who by reason of use have exercised their senses to discern. There's somebody, if you make a friend, they will mess your marriage up. There's somebody when you say hello to, your relationship is finished. You have to have discernment to know men. Men are portals. They bring good or bad. Because when you are dealing with a man, yay, you are not dealing with a man because of his face. You are dealing with a man because of what he carries. It's called relationship. I'm relating to what you carry in your ship. The cargo in your ship is what I'm relating with. So if you come to me and your cargo is wrong, that means I'm going to suffer wreck. I should know before I get to talk to you. Oh, Jesus. Someone say, I'm educating my spirit. I'm, educating my spirit. I'm exercising my spirit. I'm exercising my spirit. So we see that exercise of spirit in Proverbs 18, verse 14. So every point I'm giving you, I have to have a Proverbs scripture for you so you can understand. It says, the spirit of a man... Do you have Amplified? Do you have Passion? Do you have ASV? The spirit of a man sustains him in sickness. But as for a broken spirit, who can bear it? Do you have, um, uh, okay. The will to live sustains you when you are sick, but depression crashes courage and leaves you unable to cope. A spirit of a man will sustain you, okay. Uh, I think it's a basic English, BB, is it BB or YLT or something? Good. He says, the spirit of a man will be his support when he is ill, but how may a broken spirit be lifted up? Proverbs 4, verse 23 says that, guard your heart with all diligence, out of it comes the seasons of your life. Malachi chapter 2, the verse number 14 and 15 says, Malachi 2, 14, 15, what did he say? Verse, he, said, well, he said, you have dealt treacherously with your wife, the wife of the covenant, the companion, verse 15, see what he says. The reason you are dealing wrongly in your marriage is because you didn't take heed to your spirit. So an uneducated spirit, an unexercised spirit is the, mala, is the, is the bane, is the, is the disease, is the headquarters of divorce. If your spirit is not, <laughs> if you don't take heed to your spirit, you can never marry. Because some things will irritate you, but a strong spirit can bear it. <laughs> he said, because thou did not take heed of your spirit, you have dealt treacherously with the wife of your youth. That means a, a spirit that has not been regarded, trained, um, educated, is the reason why you have side chicks. Yeah. It's, it's, you say you've not taken heed to your spirit, so you treat your wife anyhow. So a healthy spirit will treat their spouse properly. So there's always, that's why Jesus has a way of diagnosing problems. Your problem is not, some of you are sleeping with a lot of girls, not because you want to. It's filling a void. There's something in your heart, your spirit, that has made you empty. So you think sleeping with girls will make you feel accomplished. It's a sickness in your spirit. I'm never envious of guys who get to sleep with girls. I know they are sick inside. Yeah, so they are just compensating for emptiness. It's emptiness that's making you do that. Sleeping around with people is a product of an empty spirit. You are just empty. That's why. That's why you told the Samaritan woman. He said, bring your, he said, it's not even your husband. 
He said, give me this. That means, when she said, give me this water you are talking about. So that I will not come to this water. That means she was saying that, me, eh, there's something that I'm thirsty for. I've used men. It didn't work. It's not in the number of men I've had. I'm still thirsty. When she now met Jesus, her test ended. Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. It's not a lie. It's true. You'll find Jesus. You'll be shocked. The appetite for women will walk out of the room. The next thing you will now deal with is the temptation of women, not appetite. You see, when you're in the world, you had appetite for them. So Satan infused you with supernatural energy. You could do morning to night. <laughs> the next day, another one. The next two days. It's like, what dear? What done it them well? You are giving your strength to women. Because you think that, ah, Ben is so. Ben Maba. So women are your destiny. That's for me, there's no girl I can have. Foolish man. <laughs> it's foolishness to talk like that. Because that, there's no girl you can have means there's no person who I will not freely give my strength. That's what you are saying. Do you know what the Bible says? A faithful man who can find. Faithful men are high price commodities. It is foolishness and bushness, villageness to be unfaithful. Stop it. If you're watching me online, I put the word of God to you. Listen to it. Take heed to your spirit. No woman will tempt you outside your wife. You see what makes marriage work is a healthy spirit. I bet you, we are married men, you can answer us. When our spiritual life comes down, we start seeing other women. Also from my line. Yeah, my line. Yeah. Other women will start looking beautiful. All of a sudden. They will start looking like, ah, this girl will be a better wife than my wife. It's a, it's a spirit issue. Your spirit has started coming out. <laughs> about from? About from? That means when you do cool, kapai, kapai. it's not we don't see your short dress. So. We, don't, we don't see your thing. So. We see, but we, our spirit has been taken care of. So because of that, nothing you do move us. Fire, oh! Fire! And then I said, I told you I'll tell you some things. I told you it's a practical message. So anytime you see a man cheating on his wife, it's a spirit that has not been taken care of. His spirit is empty. And that will never... It, you see the painful part? It's not filling your heart. Or it's rather taking from you. You think that sleeping with women will make you feel accomplished. The Bible says you are rather giving your strength away. Your strength is going. And somebody will foolishly say, hey, but I know some man, he slept with women all his life, he's even 70, he's still sleeping. Well done. <laughs> because to you, if you check the Hebrew word for strength, that's the same word sometimes is used for prosperity. Yeah. Sometimes that word strength is also used for glory. So you physically, you can still sleep with women for another 80 years, no problem. But your glory, the amount of money you get in life, the favor, the honor. You know there are some men, they are CEOs. When you see them, there is nothing glorious about them. Because of the women they sleep with. Oh yes! You can say this man has money, but he's empty. There is nothing glorious. Ah, this is the CEO. Women, they've taken away his glory. Yeah. It's in Proverbs. He said when you sleep with a woman that's not your wife, you have given her your glory. He said it to Proverbs chapter 6, Proverbs 7. He spoke about the strange woman. He said, when you sleep with that woman, your glory is gone. Your increase will be cut short. I'm come to touch on another one. Appetite. Watch your appetite. Food and sex. Adimi kapatos <laughs> kapaya. Today there's a hot chair something. It's no joke. Hot chair. Be circumspect about your appetite. <laughs> Somebody here. He said when you go to a great house and they invite you to the table, he said, put your knife to a truth. Proverbs 23. Verse 1 and 2. That's really. He said, When thou sittest to eat at a ruler, consider diligently what is before you. Number two, put a knife to thy throat if thou be a man given to appetite. Now remember, he's talking about Proverbs. So aside he's speaking of the etiquette of the matter, he's also talking of a dimension of displaying in life because you can't have a controlled desire. Anytime a desire controls you, you are in trouble. 
Anger controls you. Hunger controls you. Sex controls you. Everything, lust controls you. There's a problem. Kleptomania controls you. When you see somebody something, your hand will be doing. That means you have got the memo. <laughs> it means plan how to steal. As soon as your, your middle finger moves, it means it's time to steal. Then you put your hand in your pocket. Then the, the finger will move again. It's time to steal. So very soon after that memo gets to your head, your brain now enters the technology of theft. You begin to circumvent the person. And you begin to use the principle of jabbing. So you create a distraction like a typical magician for the action to occur. So you create a distraction here and bam, it's in your pocket. And by the time you realize we're a quick magician. Magician. Look, do you know thieves practice? Most of the people, young men you see doing jogging at dawn, they are thieves. Oh, look, I'm a prophet, so I see. I've seen them before. One day I saw a group of people jogging. I saw four of them. God said they are thieves. I said, Lord, why? He said they are exercising. The day they are caught, they will outrun you. And you wonder, where do they? It's not magic. They train for it. Have you watched Oliver Trees before? There's something called Oliver Twist. Have you watched that film before? If you don't watch Oliver Twist, Charles Dickens' Oliver Twist, go and watch it. It's a movie. You will see that before you are brought out to pick pocket, you are taught in the room how to pick pocket. There's another movie. Uh, what's that movie? Uh, uh, I think uh, Focus. Yeah. This Will Smith movie. Yeah. They train how to steal. Now you see me. Now you don't see me. Those movies. They'll touch you some way, and by the time you realize your bank, everything is gone. And the way they'll move it to the next person, you don't even know how. So the person does not look like the robot. So there's nothing a man has become skillful in that did not come by practice. Nothing. Nothing. I'm saying it like a Ghanaian. Nothing. Yes. If you are watching from another country, when I come to your country, I will not say nothing. I will say nothing. In Ghana, they understand nothing. The thing must be emphasized. Nothing. Nothing. So what am I trying to tell you today? If you are giving to appetite, and appetite I'm talking about is desires. A lot of you, your desires are ye. Desire for comfort. So somebody will borrow to sit in business class when they have not gotten to the level to sustain. That's what I'm serious. People will do everything to travel to Dubai. I was shocked when I realized it. Because of appetite. Do you know some people have an, and this appetite is a product that generates further. When the appetite now takes a hold of you, it becomes addiction. You see, I said sex and food. People don't even know they're addicted to food. When you say addiction, everybody thinks of pornography, masturbation. People are addicted to TV, phone, food, ice water, coke. They don't even know they're addicted. No, do you know Coca-Cola has an addi addiction? That's why the doctors will say somebody has diabetes and the woman will still not be able to resist Coke. That's an addiction. <laughs> it's like you will drink till it dies. And that shouldn't be the case. Some of you are addicted to junk food. Any food with oil in it. Burger, fries, pizza, anything with extra cheese. You like it. Anything that will increase your cholesterol, that's what you like. Is somebody here? Yeah. But I was talking about the sexual part. Listen, you know why I'm talking about the sexual part? These sexual things are very heavy. Very heavy. Now, let's go to Proverbs chapter 6, the verse 22. This is the part. See that one. See it. See it. In fact, go to 24. Start from 24. 24. He's speaking about the evil woman. He says, to, he said, now, to, now go to um, Passion Translation for me. I beg. Passion. Quickly. For truth is a bright beam. No, for 24, please. Truth will protect you from immorality. So you see, I told you, 
he's using the evil woman as a picture of experience. So truth will protect you from evil, immorality, and from the promiscuity of another man's wife. Your heart won't be enticed by her flatteries or lust over her beauty, nor will her suggestive ways conquer you. 25. Prostitutes reduce a man to poverty. Do you have it in King James so that they can see what I was saying earlier on? See what it says. King James. You can see what I was saying. For by means of a whorish woman is a man brought to a piece of bread. And an adulteress will hunt your precious life. That's what I'm saying. You can be sleeping with girls, but you don't know something is reducing your life. Yeah, you're on a journey. Your strength is going. Passion translation, quickly. And it's, it's, for, women, it's for men too. It's for men too. Prostitutes reduce a man to poverty. The adulteress steals your soul. She may even cost your life. Now, verse 27 says what? How can a man lie? <laughs> <laughs> <Let me. laughs> Verse 28. Let's just it's, it's self-explanatory. <laughs> that means that you see Romans chapter 13, 14. Quickly. Romans 13, 14. Let's see what I'm, he's trying to tell us. Romans 13, 14. Romans 13, 14. Romans 13, 14. Ah, ah. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh. Why are the people you once slept with, they know your mumu button, they are still on your phone. They are, what are they doing on your phone? You have changed, it's true, beautiful. Delete, if you don't delete that number, after all your repentance, Satan will now activate them again. Hello, it's been a while, can I see you? Mumu button. That's how you say, the good I don't want to do, I realize I'm not doing. And the evil I don't want to do, that's what I'm doing. Because you kept the number. Provision of the flesh. Provision of the flesh. You are working on hot coals because you are spiritual. Papa Oja. Look. When Daddy Crawford came and said, when you're even dating, there are some hacks and some touches you shouldn't touch. It sounds old school, but it's safety. Brah, it's safety. <laughs> There's no way you should be dating eh? and ever think in your life that your beloved can stay overnight. You are, you are not thinking well. You are not thinking well. It's a provision of the flesh. Ah, that sleepy will not sleep. Oh, <laughs> every two minutes, say, mm, is she awake? Then she will be lying in bed. Mm, is she awake? Will he wake up at dawn? Ah, will he touch me? That, that's why he be lying in the bed, thinking, 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 thinking. A few moments later, <laughs> then when we even ask you, a prophet, I don't know what came over me. What were you doing in the house? You shouldn't have even gone to the house to start with. There's a couple that blessed my heart so much. They said one day they were even watching a movie. And the way the movie was going, it became very tenuous. Yeah, you know that something when you are watching as a couple, it's very tenuous. So they were dating, and the movie became very tenuous. He says immediately the man said he started an argument. Oh, they became very angry. When they got to me, told the lady that the way the atmosphere was, if we didn't fight, would have sinned. <laughs> <laughs> You, you are very spiritual. You are very, you are very spiritual. Yeah. You know how to act. Hey, you can't handle fire. 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 <laughs> Hallelujah. You can't handle fire. You can't handle fire. And day, one of my mentors told me that a lady told her that she had slept with about five pastors. Hey. And she's so heartbroken, she wants to go to help her. So he needs him to help her. <laughs> he said the moment the person said that, he made sure that there were brothers in the house. When the lady came, he made her sit in the porch, not the hall. No, you can't play with fire and think you survive. Let me tell you something. Hey, yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm speaking especially to the young men. Let me, let me show you something. You see, women, eh, they are to be pursued. 
a lot of the errors in sexual immorality is because of men. You know, get what I'm saying very well. When it comes to sexual immorality, men are the instigators. Because you, you are strong. There are some cases, yes, men were raped. But generally, <laughs> don't laugh, please. Some people have been raped before. It's not a joke. I'm serious. Don't this is you. <laughs> so listen to this. So generally, the reason why men struggle is because our weakness is our seeing. It's our sight. So in a relationship, eh, the reason why we always advocate for spiritual men is because when a man is spiritual, no matter how you, you are aroused, he can stop the fire. No, it can't go. You tell me, my sister, not here. Yeah. That's the kind of man you tell him that if we ever touch each other, make thunder strike us. And you're like, hey, he's feeling so. Thunder has not come in. He said, no. <laughs> so I know, Sister Hoja, you are very anointed. But the man has to also be having a certain backing. Even if he's not spiritually strong, he should have an accountable partner. Somebody he can tell that, sir, some girls have come in my life. And he can say, chill, chill, watch it. Don't do this. At least there's somebody who knows that if he misbehaves. Some of us, God delivered us because we had fathers in our life. Yes. If we didn't remember our fathers, I would probably not be prophesying to you today. Yeah, I'm serious. You think we've not faced the things we faced before? Women have been naked in front of us before. What are you talking about? But we saw our future. That's why I tell you that when I've learned from experience. If you see your future, you will not sabotage your present. Some of you don't know where you are going. That's why in your feelings are higher than share. There's a journey. It's a journey. Let the Lord help you to control your appetite. The way you eat, the time you eat, all of that, please be careful. Don't eat any time. Don't eat everything. It's not everything you must eat. It's not everything you must eat. Holy Spirit, carry me, carry me. Holy Spirit, carry me, carry me, carry me. Holy Spirit, carry me, hey, carry me. to my destiny. Carry me, carry me. I need direction. Carry me. Sing it, sing it, sing it. Carry me. You know the way. Carry me. Carry me. Carry me. Oh. Carry me. Holy, Holy Ghost. Carry me. Oh. Carry me. Oh. Carry me oh. It's okay. Before it turns to our church. Amen. <laughs> the way the song is going, I realize that it's getting our vibes. Well, soon we'll start bing, 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 bing. bing. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. The next point. Of all the things you will not give in to, don't give in to the spirit of pride. Don't give in to the spirit of pride. Proverbs 16 verse 18 says that, Pride precedes destruction. Don't give in to the spirit of pride. Don't give in to the spirit of pride. In Proverbs 8 verse 13, it says that there are things that you must abhor. The fear of the Lord will cause you, Proverbs 18 verse 3, to cause you to avoid pride, arrogance. Proverbs 8 verse 13, the spirit of the Lord, the fear of the Lord will teach you to avoid pride, huh? arrogancy, an evil way and a forward mouth. The spirit, the fear of the Lord. Now, pride is a very interesting entity. Number one, its first operation is an absence of the presence of God. What that means is that pride begins with Doing things without God's assistance or God's interference. Pride. That's why it starts on. Cain walked in pride because he thought he could do life without God. That's pride. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, and he will lift you up. James 4, 
verse 7 and 8. God resisted the proud, give it grace to the humble. 1 Peter 5, verse 5 and 6. So, there's, there's a kind of operation. He said, uh-huh. God is there proud and give it grace to the humble. So, what you have to understand is that avoid the spirit of pride. Now, pride is the reason why a lot of people cannot let some things to go. They feel they can't forgive and forget. It's pride. It's, pride makes you feel like someone did something on purpose and they must suffer the consequence. It's pride. It's the spirit of pride. You are so obstinate and stiff-necked God can't even turn you. God can't convince you. It's dangerous. If you give in to the spirit of pride, that's the end. God do. Look, for God, is your, your number one enemy as a proud person is God. God is your first enemy. He will stop you. When you enter pride, God will stop you. You'll be shocked. Because, what did he say in Proverbs? He said there are seven, seven things, yea, eight things the Lord hateth. A haughty look. A prideful posture. God, they are, they are, you can't joke with God. If you like, check our history. Anybody who dared God, they saw God. From Deontay Wilder to what? They've all seen something. What is that your God? He was, he was talking of the ancestors of the Africans. And, and, and Fury just said, I believe in my Lord Jesus Christ. He, he saw something. Pride is a dangerous thing. Don't try. It's pride that led Babel. They thought they can do things without God. And there's some people like that who think that they can do life without God. That's pride. Humility will make you know that, listen, I'm an expert, but I still need help every day. That's why sometimes you tell people that even at your level in God, you still ask God for direction. They are shocked. They're like, hey, but you know too much. I said, no, that's pride. The more you know, divine knowledge makes you more humble. Jesus said, the goal of greatness, how to be great in life, how to be great in life, greatness, Oh, greatness, according to scripture. First Samuel chapter 15, the verse 27. No, it's the verse 17, sorry. First Samuel 15, 17, he says, Ah, when thou was little in thy own eyes, did the Lord not make you, what? Head of the tribes of Israel. So there's a way Samuel said to Saul, Saul, when you saw yourself little, didn't God make you head? That means that anybody who feels they are better than someone, you have ended your journey of greatness. That you are, you, you are the most anointed, so God should make you know. When I come to preach, you do know the prayers I pray. Sometimes you, you, I'm supposed to take the mic at a certain time. I'm not asking God to clarify the things he told me. I'm not coming to you because the prophet knows what to say. That's pride. The day I enter that, I've ceased to see myself small in the eyes of God. And a lot of people have stopped. That means you can also start your life again when you start changing how you see yourself. One of my sons is here. He told me that he was going to work somewhere and the company mistakenly gave him a salary of about 10000 or 15000 or so. That's the, what they gave him the appointment letter. It's as soon as he heard it, he changed the way he was working. He said, when he's working in time, he was seeing everybody else. Ah. When someone even kicks and dust for something, he looks at him at a certain eye like, Really? <laughs> This is a 10,000 Ghana city salary worker. You know, it's a big money. You know what he said? He texted me. He said, when I was teaching on application, he said, Daddy, this is your message. It's serious. He said, I didn't know there was pride in my heart. He said, when people even talk to me a certain way because of the salary. He said, the salary alone. Later when he went, no, no, it was an error. <laughs> no, wait, I'm coming. It was not God punishing him. When he mentioned it to me, I laughed. You know why? God said, I allowed them to do that. So he can learn that. If 15,000 or 10,000 can change your attitude, then you are not ready for it. Any money that will change you, you are not ready for. If I get that money, the world will show the world. <laughs> you will never get it to. That's your attitude. It will never come till Jesus comes. Money that will not change you is the money that you handle. Let me repeat myself. Money that will not change you is money you will handle. If I have a private jet, you even know it. You know the way God gives you a Range Rover and you don't even know the purpose of the Range Rover. So you just take church vibes. When the Lord bless you. And the whole Instagram knows you have a new Range Rover. You see, in all you're getting, you didn't get understanding. You don't even know why you have a Range Rover. But some of us, when God gives us a Range Rover, my dear, you know what we do? Any pastor who is coming to preach, prophet, the pastor deserves to sit in Range Rover. My car is available. Are we hosting the name of God? My car is what we used to pick him from airport. 
That wisdom is the wisdom that will make you enter heaven and realize that no, no, your car has been stored in the database of heaven because it was what was carrying men of God and making them feel comfortable. The day some of us have private jets, you'll never hear. Unless someone they tell you after five years. <laughs> but that's me, I'll take a picture and say, thanks be to God. The ministry has finally uh, prophetized them. Somebody has dashed prophetized them a jet. You will not hear it. Because then I lack understanding. God does not need my private jet to inspire somebody. <laughs> I don't need to take a picture of it. Recently, I was, today I got, yesterday also, I went online. And I realized that apparently, I think you guys were the ones telling me that when it appears, when you type Prophet Adam, anything that follows is a number of people who have dialed in. So I realized people have dialed in Prophet Adam's wife on Google and YouTube. People have dialed in Prophet Adam's songs. And then they send the person a reply. <laughs> I'm not a songwriter. But you could see that they are looking for you, but you are not present. Yet they are hearing like the wind the things you are doing. But why can't we decode who his wife is? Like by now, over how many, almost, how many people do we have on Instagram? Where are you? Managers, how many? 11? Are we at 11K? You are 11K now. So imagine I have 11K people. Some of you didn't even know I have 11K followers. I have 11K followers on Instagram. Then I'll just carry my Madi. Life in Kenya. Life in Dubai. Everybody sees me. There is nothing that will be anointed again. Because I'm displaying everything about me. Do you know, even Jesus, the people who came to follow me said, Where is your house, sir? Even they didn't know his house. No. <laughs> when thou saw thyself small, God made you captain. Abeti Maso. And you, when you are working, it's like now, one small $5,000 you get every month. This is how your shoulder is. <laughs> Robocop. <laughs> we can't see air again. What are you earning? So if you're not small in your own eyes, it doesn't matter what you have. Oh. It doesn't matter what car you drive. That's why I never said One day I think somebody, somebody brought a friend, of hers to, uh, a friend of hers to church. And I prophesied to the guy, even describing the car of the car, the guy. I think two years ago or last year or something. No, no, the guy came with a Porsche Panorama. Yeah, so it was later on the guy said, that the guy you prophesied to, he came with a Porsche oh, Panorama. Do you know Panorama? I didn't say Rama, I said Panorama. <laughs> How of you don't even know cars, so eh, you don't even know what I'm talking about. I just go, boy, mom, try me a picture of Porsche Panorama. No more car, no. That's the car the boy dropped. So I'm sure when he left, he thought I would ask for him. Or I didn't care. I, mean, I was just seeing what the Lord said. Yeah. I've met people with money. I've met people with money. But if you don't see yourself small, that, listen, no matter where you go and preach in the world, your sheep are the most dearest people to you. They might not give you the best of money. <laughs> you see, you are laughing. You know. You see that car? This one, this is a car. Porsche. Very dangerous car. How much is the price? How much is it? Around two hundred three hundred thousand dollars This car. That boy brought it to church. I didn't even know that's a car. If I was a, if I was a thief, change the color. This color is, is making it look like Corolla. Change it. <laughs> Find the correct color for the car. So the car looks, it's not making the car look powerful. Per color, Papa Binama car. Then who said car is expensive? The people are even wondering, is this all the car prophet is talking about? Ash is not a good color for a car. It makes it look like a normal car. Per color, Bina color car. They look very red or brown or chocolate or something. Ceramic. Yes. Hallelujah. If you don't see your, listen, I don't care what ministry you have. There's a way. Of, look, one of the things that I love about Baba Deboye is humility. Look, the man controls. You even heard this at, at his, his interview with CNN. He said, Why do you have a private jet? He said, Of course, I cannot use a bicycle to go to 200 countries. There are in over 200 countries in the world. Redeem is a large church. Redeem. You, you see Oasis. You see um, Jesus. You see. Uh, uh, this one, uh, what's his name? Kra? The bridge. You see, there's this one that, uh, this is our pastor, Pastor P. Daniel. Uh, he, he heads. Yes, the, all those things are expressions of redeemed, living seed. They are different expressions. That's different from typical RCCG zone one, zone two, zone seven. And Baba Adeboe, look, they have churches. Churches. 
over 190,000 pastors. Not workers, pastors. 190,000 pastors alone. You are not doing well. This color. <laughs> it doesn't matter. When you go, go and look for the car yourself. Eh? <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Are you here? Deal with the spirit of pride. One day I heard a story of a man of God who was rebuked by his pastor. This story I think is a very popular story. Pastor Chris. He, pastor Beauty himself said he was rebuked by Pastor Chris. And Pastor Chris had heard something that looked like he did it. And this was international pastors meeting. Yeah. And rebuke Pastor Biodum for it. Pastor Biodum didn't say it was not me. He lied on the floor and said, I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry, sir. So later on, Pastor Chris went and realized that, no, it was not him. And it was about some two months or some months. And he called him, Biodum, I heard it was not you. He said, yes, sir. He said, don't apologize, sir. The pride. One of the ways you can measure pride is coming is, nobody has the right to correct you. It brings me to my next point. Nobody has the right to correct you. And any time you are corrected and you feel incensed, it is the indication of familiarity, whether by an authority or by your friend. Every reaction to correction is a satanic operation. <laughs> Ooh. Proverbs 19.25, my next point. Love correction more than praise. This generation is a generation that likes likes, loves, following. We don't like correction. We don't like rebuke. This generation does not like it. So it says, smite a, go to passion, please. When you come to Proverbs, stay the same passions. What do you say? If you punish the insolent who don't know any better, they will learn not to mock. But if you correct a wise man, he will grow even wiser. See what he said again in the verse 20. See what he said verse 20. Listen well to wise counsel and you'll be willing to learn from correction so that by the end of your life, you'll be known for your wisdom. That means that correction teaches you faster than praise. You did well, you did well. It does not teach you as much as correction. That thing you did, change it. If you want to do well in life, Desire correction more than you did well, than praise. Have you noticed that your friends can say, Oh, Charlie, the presentation you do hello. Hey, you'll be serious. And your lecturer will mark you down. Yeah. That means if you follow your friends' praise, you are going to be a fool for the rest of your life. You think you are an expert, but you don't know anything. But it is what your lecturers do to you. If you understand this wisdom, you will be excited. Because can I tell you something? If you failed, they will not correct you. Think about it. Sometimes you notice that your lectures can drill you, grill you, correct, and at the end of the day, you get A. And you are wondering, after all I went through, why did they give me A? Because you were right, but they wanted to put you on the right path. And the way you were receiving it, it made them give you more correction. I'm a father. I'm a pastor. When I'm correcting somebody and they don't look interested, it's the last day I'll ever speak. Bastardism is a product of an uncorrected child. If you are a bastard, they don't correct you. Because wherever you go, however you live, it's up to you. That's what he said. If you are without correction, Proverbs chapter, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 5 and 6. If you are without correction, then you are a bastard. That's what the Bible says. If you are without correction, then you are a bastard. There are people who have to call them and tell them that what you did was wrong. And they too have to learn the wisdom of the correction and say, Sir, thank you. Daddy, thank you for correcting me. I really have learned something. I've learned something to change me, to change me. But when they correct you, give face, attitude. That's the end. First Corinthians chapter 4. 21. What did he say? When a father comes to you, he comes with what? A rod, love, and the spirit of meekness. Spirit of meekness means that it is patience under provocation. He's provoked, but he's being patient. He's taking his time. But a father must have a rod over your life. He must have a spoken mouth over your life. Must be correction. Love correction more than praise. Praise will take you to hell. 
Every day you want them to say you did well. It's not every day they have to tell you you did well. When everybody is praising you all the time, you should know something is off. You are becoming a yes man. Or the way you are acting, nobody can really tell you that you are off. That is why in the ministry, as fathers, our sons can't correct us. So we too have to be under people who will tell us that this thing you said is not correct. Or man of God, this part, I think the way, I, when I taught on Colossians, everybody said it was powerful. My father and the Lord listened to it. And he said it was powerful. But there was a part I made an absolute statement. I should have made it a suggestive statement. That was the part when I spoke about the tone in Paul's flesh. He said the way I said it is like it's absolute. But he said I should have made it suggestive. That's the correction. What have I learned from that day when I'm even making certain statements? Sometimes some people go and do research. say, Daddy, when you said it like this, I went to check. Uh, but there's also another that I say, yes, that's why sometimes I use the word historical writings, certain writings, so that I've learned the language of communication. I don't say the thing that what I'm saying is the only truth. I say it especially when it is extra biblical knowledge and it's not absolutely stated and categorically stated. There's a way I talk. And you go like, how is Prophet able to present this? It's a product of correction. I've learned how to be corrected. Pride will not let you enjoy it. If you want to measure whether you are proud, ah, one day my mom, <laughs> my mom is so powerful, wonderful woman of God. After preaching, it's about two years ago. I was a prophet, a preacher, I had the power. She's fancy, disciplinarian. I had the power. But no mom, no mom. I had your altar call. I should do altar call so that the souls will be won. Now, naturally, I'll say, Ma, God called me, didn't call you. That's pride talking. But as soon as I said, Yes, mommy, put your mate. So after that, I went to pray about it. God said, She's right. Add prayers at the end of your broadcast. So that people want to accept Jesus Christ, they can accept. But there are other times to be led. Because you're not an evangelist, there are times after teaching you prophesy. Other times you minister. But other times too, God will tell you that there are some souls here. Do altar call for them to come to the front. I didn't go and fight her. I listened. I listened. If I'm proud, I can never be corrected. I'm a product of many corrections. Many. Many. Baba can correct me. Say, no, Adam, don't talk like that. It's wrong. Be confident. You have it. And I can know when he has switched. I know when my father in the Lord is not happy with me. I know that I've, I've gone off. I have to. Daddy, please, this thing I didn't try. Please, I'm sorry about that. Blah, 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 blah. Yes. So, man of God, next time I can please let me know the time because sometimes we are, I say, Daddy, please, I'm sorry. Don't happy again. Yeah. If you are not a child that is corrected, you will not be a child. That's what the Bible says. Oh, go back to Proverbs 19, verse 20. He said, people will not know you for wisdom. So when you see some of us and say, a hey, prophet, you have wisdom, it's a product of correction. Ask yourself, who corrects you? Who can tell you that thing you said is not accurate? The way you spoke was wrong. Who can correct you? Hallelujah. Last one. There are so many, but let me just run up, okay? Companionship. Eh? Let me do two, then I'll end. Number one, learn to use your tongue well. The usage of your tongue. Bridle your tongue. Bridle your tongue properly. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 4. Proverbs 18, verse 4. What does it say? Proverbs 18, verse 4. Don't worry, I know. Words of wisdom are like fresh flowing brook like deep waters that spring forth from within, bubbling up inside with understanding. Then verse 10 says what? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Let's go to verse number 6 
Oh, please read it well. One to go. That means that whatever you are going to get in life is a product of what you have been saying. Please, I'm going to say a couple of things right now. In Psalm 141 verse 2, the Bible says that, you know, let my prayers be set forth as incense and the lifting up of my hands as an evening sacrifice. Verse 3 says, Lord, set a watch upon my mouth. Your mouth can destroy your prayers. What you are seeing can destroy your prayers. Please, watch what you say after you pray. Watch what you say after you pray. Your mouth, he says that after you have prayed, make sure your mouth has a watch. There's a lock on your mouth to make sure you say things consistent to the things you have been praying about. Proverbs 18, 20 and 21 speaks about how death and life lies in the power of the tongue. Death does not lie in Satan's hand. It lies in your tongue. Let me repeat myself. The fear of death is a projection of hell. But death itself is an utterance from your mouth. He didn't say death and life lies in Satan's hand. It lies in your tongue. Whether a thing will live or die is in your tongue. Whether a thing will live or die is in your tongue. And the Bible says you reap the consequences. You reap the consequences. What you are saying is stronger than what you are praying. <laughs> hey. What you are saying is stronger than what you are praying. I repeat, what you are saying is stronger. Look, every time you have a conversation, spirits are ready to harvest. Every time you have a conversation, spirit, media, I can't marry you. Media, I can't serve God. Media, this church is too difficult. All the things you are saying is what is creating your reality. How do you turn a ship around? James chapter 3, 3, um, 3, 4, 5. It is the things you keep saying. Listen, if your life is going bad, you have allergy issues, you have eye problems, use your mouth. Use, oh, your mouth is not for eating. It's for tending life. Your mouth is a life tender. Your mouth is a ship controller. It's your destiny controller. How you are talking. You will never find me by the grace of God. By the day I got this revelation, ever speaking under duress. Ever in my life. Because I understand that spirits have this word. Spirits operate by the energy you're speaking. Every time you speak, a spirit is energized. So what you are speaking determines what is being energized. That's why people enter blessings and they always never see blessing. Because the things they say, it will never make you enjoy it. I have a good marriage. I enjoy my wife. I enjoy my husband. You have to talk like that. If you don't talk like that, hey, this marriage car, I don't see where it's going. You, you, are, you are energizing spirits to create problems for you. This single hoodie I can't do is, is not a joke, but it's not fair hoodie, it's hard though. Very soon you are creating a, you are creating declarations for your, your, your inability to hold on. You should rather be in your room and say, Kabo Katalaba. At 55, I'm having my twins. Kale, you, you are speaking that there's no age that will stop me from my childbirth. You are talking like that. I'm a king's kid. When I meet royals, they respect my countenance. That's how you talk. That's how you talk. That's how you act. We build by our mouth. I repeat, we build by what? Our mouth. I can never be tired. I have the anointing to stay strong in the word of God. I read chapters after chapters. I know the word of God. You heard what Baba said. Baba said something. He said when he was reading the scriptures, he said, I'm a child of God. Open up ye gates, O ye everlasting doors. He told the scripture to open up to him. So we don't read the Bible just saying, I, I don't understand. What is that? It's a wrong declaration. I understand. My spirit is alive. That's why we say the word of God is alive in my spirit. The word of God is alive in my soul. My mind is activated. I see what God saw. I speak what God speaks. That's how you talk. If you see a man, he said, Mark a perfect man. His end, his end, his end. The perfect man is he that has learned how to control his tongue. That's what the Bible says. He that shall learn to bridle his tongue, he is a perfect man. That's what the Bible said. So the perfect man is he who has learned how to use words to construct his future. I told you, you are meditating on the wrong things. So all that you are experiencing now, you kept saying it. You kept saying it. You, for instance, someone tells you, Charlie, when you date, don't try doing it. Ah, how can you date without kissing? Is it possible? You have declared a law. And no dating will be easy for you. Ka. Para santo boshi. 
This thing cannot be overemphasized. This generation, you don't understand the power of words. You don't. Because you've been taught to be in your emotions. Every day you are talking your emotions. I don't know. My mental health. My eh, 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 eh. Your mental health. Try. This time I was speaking to a woman of God. She told me that there's a powerful family. The daughter has cut herself. She can't wear normal shirt again. She has, she has to wear long sleeve. Mental health. She has OCD, BSc, MSc, PhD, all the Ds. She has it. Because of it, mental health. And there are demons that are hurting. The demons that are acting up. Speak life, oh, and stop wasting your time on things thinking that, no, go speak life. The Bible also said in Psalm 89, verse 15, blessed are the people that hear a joyful noise. Can I tell you something? Spirits respond to sound. When joyful sounds are made, angels progress towards you. When complaining sounds are made, demons come near you. So spirits respond to sounds. He said, blessed are the people that know a joyful noise. They shall walk in the countenance and the light of God. Ay, 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 ay. That means that every time there must be jubilation. That's what the Bible says. Numbers 23 verse 21. He says, there is no, he has not beheld it, for the shout of the king is in their midst. That means because there's a jubilating sound, sound in their midst, Balaam cannot curse them. When there is mourning and weeping, complainings and memories. Bible says in Numbers chapter 21 and 1 Corinthians chapter 10, spirits are sent towards you. Complainings attract demons, snakes. They will come and bite. Stop complaining. I've taught you a simple principle. They bounce you. Something didn't go your way. As soon as you pick your document, as soon as you pick your, your, your ego and your dignity, you told the girl, I like you. She said, I don't like you back. And it's like they've poured water on you. Just... Say, thank you very much. As you are walking, don't begin to go like, why, what's wrong with me? What have I done to this life? Why, why? Nobody wants to like me. No. When you walk away, just begin to declare, a better is coming. There is one door closes, another opens. He taketh away the first that he may establish the second. This is a man who is walking in a place where he will progress in life. If you want to mark any man who is doing well in life, listen to his language. Listen to his language. The only time I'm very strict on people with finances is when there is wastage. That's my finance team. But there's nothing like there's no money. We don't have money. It's a lie. It's not a language I'll use. You see this man I just mentioned about you who, has, who is hosting all these powerful people? He once fired somebody in his church. An accountant who came to tell him that there's no money in the account. The person lost his job. When I heard it, I said, Father, I will do the same. God said, no, teach them first. So that your accountants can never tell you that, Daddy, there's no money. That's the day you just, as soon as you say there's no, before you get to money, you say, Sir, my resignation letter. <laughs> I know you are sacking me. No. Speak. I'm teaching them. Very soon I'm going to give finance teaching. I'll tell them when we count money, speak on the money. You multiply. You multiply. That's how you, how, do you know how we multiply money? We count it. If you, if you did the mass, you realize that you are spending beyond what you are earning. Do you know where it's coming from? Your mouth. Your mouth is giving you increase. It's a do oh, Jesus Christ. I just have to sit to my mouth and say, Father, as I enter this country, they respond to the gospel. This is the amount of money I'll be blessed with in Jesus' name. And usually God answers me. It counts on my speaking, my mouth. I've given her, I've given her, nobody's responding. That your speaking has nullified your harvest, it has nullified it. It has. Speak. Speak life. He said, let the weak say I'm strong. This generation does not know how to use words. Let the weak say I'm strong. Bako toka. I'm strong. Hey, I'm strong. I'm strong. You know, there was a time in 2010 when the revelation of confession came to the church. Everybody was just confessing anyhow. You have stopped confessing. You know why? Because it didn't become revelation to you. It was, you were joining the masses to also say, I know who I am. I have the life of God in me. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> and no one there. Instead of you to have meditated on the thing and let it become part of you. So that even the way you live your life. Anybody talks to you. One of my sons came to me and said he went to meet some of his friends. The first time he started coming around me. He said, my friends told me that you have changed. And he asked them why. He said, the way you talk has changed. You don't talk defeat again, that the system is hard. He, he said, me, Adam, you will never hear that statement there's no dollar. Hmm. 
So I'm changing CDs to dollars. I said, ah, it's gone high. Oh. Wow, powerful, amazing. I'll never buy a Ghana pa. It don't come from my mouth. The moment I say Ghana pa, I've become subject to the spirit of Ghana. You don't know what your words are doing. Blessed are the people that make a joyful noise. Spirits move towards sound. That's why serpents like music. Spirits are attracted to sound. So anything coming to your camp is a product of a sound you have been making. Watch the sounds you are making. Mm, life is hard. This is hard. The demons for hardness are coming. coming. The doctor said, I'm growing. The doctor said, my ex are left with three. Eh, 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 eh. Blessed are the people that hear a sound. I'll make a right sound. Why can't you take the promises of God literally? The Bible. One day I was praying, I was in Nigeria, and someone was telling me about the story of Bensi in Dahosa. I said, God, what did Dahosa had I want? And I said, what did this man have that What did Baba Lola have? Then none of us said, I saw. I was, in a, I was in a jeep going to the hotel, and I, I was asking God these questions. What did this man have that they pro procured dimensions of God? Then God said, literal taking of the word. I said, oh, what do you mean? He said, they didn't say it was Odin days. Or this is uh, the days of thunder and fire. They took what God did for Joshua, literally for their day. I said, hey. He said, if you can take everything I said in the word, literally for your day, women will be 16 and half twins. Yes, literal, 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 literal. You are not, you are not just opposing and say, you know, those days, usually they live from 120 and 150. So when, they, when the, the child bearing age was 60, it's a lie. Otherwise, don't call Rebecca Barron. If it was normal childbearing age, then 60, should, they shouldn't have said she was barren. But the moment they put barrenness there, it tells you that was not the record of the pre Adamic, uh, what do you call it, the Adamic Noah generation. After that, when man's years reduce, after a time, if you don't have a child, they call you barren. So if they call Rebecca barren, then it means the same verdict she had in a day is what we have in a day. But you are making analysis why the days of Abraham is different from our days. That's why you're not getting his miracle. Confess the word. I can never be broke. The days of my poverty are over. You see, you have to say it. Don't say the days of my poverty are over. Vim. I can never be broke. Kado paya. Yeah, it's a serious thing, though. ATTC, one of my cousins wanted to give us a bank loan from Unibank at the time. He said, oh, I prof, Charlie, your yeah, well, Unibank loan be for church loan. As soon as he said, low, he didn't finish the loans. I said, never. He said, oh, told him. He said, never. <laughs> I stopped him quickly because I didn't want him to suggest that we need loan to buy instruments. Today, by the grace of God, we buy instruments ourselves without church. That's how it's supposed to work. Can never be broke. If you want to see a man who is rich, progressing, things are working. The things he said. There's no country I've gone to that was not prophetic. They gave me a prophetic word by Prof. Manasseh. He said, God has given you Africa. It became my prayer. Because God has given me Africa. When I enter any African country, I'll be accepted. <laughs> it's not now, hey, is Nigeria going to be safe? Hey, this country will they accept me? God has given it to you. My only job is to repeat what has been given. <laughs> Pray to your tank. If you do not use this your mouth, all you get out from your mouth is, is meat and good and is, Nothing beyond the food you eat. This mouth. It is called stoma. It's a weapon. Use it to carve your life out. Please. Stop using it for gossip. Useless things. Use it to carve your life out. Last point. Let me mention this one in reading. Learn the ways of kings. The ways of kings is given and honor. Learn the way of kings. When kings meet, they exchange gifts. When kings meet, they exchange gifts. When Sheba was coming to Solomon, he brought her, he brought him 120 talents of gold and spices and all those things. When she was also living, Solomon also gave her animals and certain things. The way of kings is the exchange of gifts. So your priesthood is your prayer. Your kingship is your giving. You exercise your kinship by your giving. It's the way of kings. So bring your first fruit to the Lord and he will cause your bounds to increase. Proverbs 3 verse 4. Proverbs 3 verse 9 and 10. 
you will cause your bounds to increase. You will cause your bounds to increase. Increase that comes to you. He said, glorify God with all your wealth, honoring him with your very best, with every increase that comes to you. Verse 10. Then what? Verse 10. Then every dimension of your life will overflow the blessings from uncountable source of inner joy. Then Proverbs chapter 18. He says again, verse 16, the gift of a man. Would you like to meet a very generous person, an important person? Take a generous gift. It will do you wonders to gain entrance into his presence. So when he says the gift of a man will make room for him, it's not talent, it's seed, it's gift. Actually, it's not talent. Your talent is not what makes room for you, it's your gift. When they are coming to, when you are going to present, when you are going to tune for, do you know you have to send a gift? It's the way of kings. The way of kings. That's why when the Magi were coming to visit Jesus, they brought gifts. They didn't come empty handed. So your kingship is expressed in the way you are able to give gifts. Christmas, if you were a king and you are working your kingship, you'll be thinking about who to bless, who to give something to. That's the way of kings. <laughs> Lastly, understanding companionship. Understand companionship. Understanding companionship. Now, there's something about the scripture that I love so much. Hmm. Proverbs 22, verse 11, quickly. Let's read together. I want to go. Proverbs 16, 28. Oh, say it well, say it well. Proverbs 17, 17, quickly. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, read it well, please. Hallelujah. He said, dear friend will love you no matter what. That means that the way, that's what Proverbs 18 said, the way to be friendly is the ability to overlook error. If you are somebody who is always picky about people's faults, you will not have much friends. Every day somebody has done something to you, then your friends will not be, you won't have friends. Every friend will step on your toe. Don't your siblings step on your toe? Is it a stranger who will not step on your toe? What are you talking about? Even your mother sometimes steps on your toe. So the Bible said that children obey your parents in the Lord. Then he says, fathers, provoke not your children to anger. So even fathers can provoke us. So everybody, everybody can offend somebody. It's everywhere. Are we together? Yeah. So if you are somebody who wants to have friends, you should not be somebody who is always offended. You are sensitive. No one can say anything to you. Ah, every time you are very some way. Somebody is joking, then they start teasing you. Then you also join and tease. Then from that day, you have kept malice. I don't like how you spoke about me. The way you were laughing at me. You are, you are not ready to be a friend. You are not serious. You are not serious. You don't know how to play. You are not serious. Amen. Sometimes some of the very good friends of yours, they will gang up with people who you don't like to tease you and it can get you. But he said, if you want to be a friend, you love no matter what. No matter what. That's why we are friends. That means that adversity is the first test of the quality of friendship. Any good relationship in your life will come under attack. And when it comes under attack, we will see where you stand. 2024, if I'm preaching you sleep, I'll mention your name. <laughs> that means your spirit is not strong. You have gone low. Oh yeah, I know what I'm talking about. You are not writing notes. You are sleeping. You are... <laughs> Let me preach. Proverbs chapter 20. Seven. Let me end with this one. Let me end before. Um, where is um, family life coordinator? The exams are, the papers are ready. Love matters. Pastor Ocholi, Doctor George, all of that is ready. Plus the books they are supposed to read. Please give them refresher notice this week. 
okay, end of the month, all family life exams is going live. <laughs> live. <laughs> and everybody here, please make sure you write it. If you ever come to me and say you want to marry and I've not seen your name in any of family life exams, don't dream. We are married at a brotherhood of the star, <laughs> Aja International Ministries. I'm not going to marry you. <laughs> and volunteers, you also know. They are also writing exams that week, so prepare yourself. Proverbs chapter 27, please. Didn't I mention the verse? Verse 21. 27. No, 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 no. Where's my... Okay, 27, is it 27, 17? No, no. 11, 27. Find what he said about iron sharpens iron. 27 what? The countenance of another man. Uh, you are in King, you are in, go to King James, King James. Let me end with this, please, quickly. 17, aha. Uh -huh. 27, 17. Iron sharpeneth iron, so shall a man sharpen the countenance of his friend. Do you have passion now? Oh, yes. So one person sharpens the character of one. Now, the, word, the Hebrew word for countenance is the word panim. Panim is the same word for face. When God said, I will show you my, you can't, no one can see my face. It's the same word also for presence. So, the, so some version says that the person of one person will sharpen the other person. Another version says the character of one man will sharpen the character of another person. Now, all these things are indications of something very interesting. The word panim is a very interesting word. When God says, my face shall go before you, the word face is not just God's. That's why the Bible says that Moses saw the face of God. But he didn't see the face of God as in his face face. He saw the name of God, the goodness of God, the mercy of God. You hear what he said? I'll declare my name. And I'll be good to whom I'll be good to. I'll be merciful to whom I'll be merciful. That's what the Lord, and the Bible said the Lord declared his name before Moses. So the name, the face of God is not just this nose I know. That's not what Moses saw. Moses saw the goodness of God. He saw the mercy of God. He saw the name of the Lord that was declared. Are you here? Yeah. That means that the countenance of a man is his name, his goodness, his mercy, his capacities, and personhood in the spirit. What I'm preaching right now to you, everything I'm saying right now is coming and summed up in words. But all my words are when I got born again 27 years ago, my encounters with the Holy Spirit, my encounters with Jesus, the impartations I've received from men of God, my disciplines in God, my givings, my fastings, my prayers, all of them have lined up like this as I'm talking. But all this spiritual activity is expressed in the words that you are hearing. That is why when you speak to a seductress or a, a seductive woman, or let me even give you a typical example. When you have, if you've ever worked by a prostitute, by mistake, <laughs> Let's just say by mistake. Or you were in a car, or you were passing Togo and Bazi, and a, a prostitute, they, pss, and you rolled the glass down, and you looked at the person. You felt something come towards you. That thing, the face, it's called countenance. That thing that comes towards you is the energy, the people she has slept with, the shrine she has gone to, the last that she carries, for which she's able to seduce men to sleep with her. All of that are standing with her. At the, that's why a woman, that, women wear short dresses at the beach. But why is it that this one is wearing short dress and is calling you? Because there's countenance around here. It's the same way when a man comes with the countenance of God. You can feel God's presence all of a sudden. That means that countenance is not just my face. It is everything I've interfaced with before I met you. That's what countenance is. That is why there are some people you have to be very... You have to use scrutiny to get them into your circle. Because if they enter your circle, they can export foul spirits. And all of a sudden, you will be under attack. And that attack is such that, I'm telling you, do you know there are some people when you get close to them, they will make you leave your pastor. Yeah. Because what they carry is a rebellious spirit. All of a sudden, your conversations will start looking for faults. My pastor is this. I don't know why this. Meanwhile, that's the same person who has even made you pray. He has made you fast. He has made you have your first vision. He's the reason why you've ever been able to prophesy. But all of a sudden, something is making you react. It's countenance. You are interfacing with wrong environments. Choose your countenance well. 
Because that thing that we will carry is because of the person you have spent time with. Simple. That's the simple way I can put it. That means that God designed countenance in such a way that, sir, what you, is ah, Luke chapter 1 verse 17. Let me end with this one. Jesus. Oof. Can we translate? Yeah. We can translate, eh? So, uh, P.S. Pram Pram. Let's read one to go. Put passion for me. Thank you, Holy Spirit. There's someone here who's about to receive a contract this month. I just sense it. I just sense it. There's a contract coming to you ending of this month into December, January. Yeah, there's a contract coming. Yeah. Whoever it is, there's a contract coming. You will come and testify that you got a contract. Let's read together. He will go before the Lord as a foreigner with the same power and anointing of Elijah the prophet. He will be instrumental and turn the house of the fathers and turn the back to the children of God and the house of Israel back to the what? Wisdom of their righteous fathers. That means that there is a wisdom the Bible will not teach you. Okay. E. And God said, people are disobedient to this thing. And one of the anointings of the spirit of Elijah is to give us prophetic sensitivity to be able to tend to the rich wisdom of righteous fathers. I'll show you a secret today. God didn't tell Moses that he's tired. He needs 70 others. It's Jethro who told him. Yet he's a prophet. God didn't tell Moses that he has not circumcised his son, so he's going to kill him. It is his wife who saw it and said, Sir, God was coming to kill you, so I had to circumcise you before you met him. Hey, yeah. Are we together? Yeah. Hey! Are you sure? Yeah. What if you answer Jesus Christ? That wisdom of the just is an engineering by God. Come, sir. That means that God says, there's prosperity in my word. Believe it and it will work for your life. Then he gets a private jet. He has a powerful business conglomerate. And he's a walking encyclopedia. Of the word of God. He has shown the patterns of spiritual patterns for ministry and for business. Then all of a sudden I'm praying to God, Father, show me how to do business and be a man of God. God will not show me a vision. He will point me to him. Because in the technology of the wisdom of the fathers, God looks for physical, most physical representation of his true word. The moment God finds people like that, he stops telling you, he uses them. Sit down, sir. That is why when God wanted to show man the sonship protocols, he had to send himself to physically embody the, the man who will be a son so that all sons will have a physical person. They can, that's why he said, Abraham is the technology of friendship. Look to him. When he came to Joseph, he said there's a person called Joseph. He is the reason why nations were saved. He's a pattern. Look to him. That means that there is a realm. God designs teaching from the people you keep around you. So depending on what you keep around you will determine what you are being taught. So if you, if you want to know what you are learning, when you go home tonight, check your top five people around you. You will know what you are learning. If the top five people around you are not consistent in church, they are not prayerful, they are always struggling with spirit, flesh, you will notice that that technology working in you is because the people around you are teaching you this thing. If any son of man wants to prophesy, they, all they have to do, if they are prophets, they have to just follow me where I go. It will be easy. It will be easy. Just like that. I walk with a teacher, so the word opens to me because of the person I walk with. There are some things. I'm when my father is teaching, I open my mouth and say, Kai, Kai, God. <laughs> One day he was just teaching me something. I said, I, I think, uh, I don't think I should teach the word again. I've left all the teaching for him because, hey, 
And every time he's teaching, I'm opening my eyes, I'm saying, I'm canal, I'm canal. I have to be serious, daddy. And he's laughing. So, oh, man of God, I said, daddy, <laughs> you don't understand. I have to be serious. You know why? You know why? Because the things I'm hearing is making me feel like, Kai, <laughs> we have not reached anywhere. <laughs> the, the, yeah. I understood that, you see, there's a level where you are cooking, then you just cause the, the fire to flare the, cook, the food. There's another level to you do shum, 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 then the food is just jumping in the air. There's another level to you toss the pan, and you can go and wash your hand and cross your leg, and come back after five minutes, and you collect everything one by one. That is the realm of master builder. <laughs> that realm, yeah, they can toss the thing. You're like, this man has lost it. He will navigate himself. And you're like, Jesus Christ. Have you ever been hearing such people teach? And you're like, ah, what is he going to say we've not known about this scripture? Then he will open it, you're like, ah. Because the last one you got, you're like, Charlie, this is the chiefest revelation. <laughs> <laughs> then the way they started, they didn't even go to layer two, they went to layer seven. You're like, Kai, Kai, this is what instigates humility. What is that humility? There are things I don't know about God. I have to look at Elvis. There are things I don't know about God. I have to look at Pastor Boafo. This is the power of community. It means that there are some things you never know in your life. There are some ways you never know how to be a pastor for Prophet Adam till you look at this man. There are some things you never know to be a peer. You never know to be this. So there are some people God puts ahead of you that look to this person. They are patterning some things according to my pattern. And that's how you know how to relate. That's how to work. So sometimes the people you are fighting with are the people you should be learning from. That's why pride is a dangerous spirit. Dangerous spirit. That's called the wisdom of the just. The day I found that key, sir, when a brother calls me and said, Man of God, I had a dream that you should be resting. I saw that you are broken down. It is God's intelligence telling me that I will not tell you to slow down. There's a man called Jack Cole. He died of overeating. Yes. He had a very interesting appetite. I remember mean, Jacob hardly fast. So he had a very stout appearance. Why didn't God tell him that sir you are overeating? But it is true that somebody came to tell him, like a brother, child boy, watch your diet. I think you should watch what you eat. But he felt God has not said it. So this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Sometimes God sends brothers to tell you, that girl, I'm not comfortable. You're like, oh, what is it? The day she floss you, because you are proud, you can't tell him that the girl you warned me of. Because he has flawed you. You can't say it. It's called the wisdom of the just. It is that wisdom of the just God employs in the blessing of status. Sometimes you've forgotten to read Proverbs. Then somebody posts his own. You're like, Jesus, let me check my own. Have you understand it? It's called the wisdom. That's why I tell you to post it on your status. Because sometimes you become a reminder to a brother. Sometimes somebody is about to go and fornicate. As soon as they tune into your status, you cannot handle the fire in your bosom. The consequences will take your life. You are like, Jesus, Jesus. Hello, Charlie, no come again, no come again. No come again. Because feelings not take off. Somebody's status has killed your feeling. Sometimes when you are playing prayer, preaching your, your hall, your neighbors are hearing it. There's a girl in the room about to undress. They're like, ah, who is that? Katuska, you have, you have put a no fly zone here. You have put a girl on your bed. Come on, get out. You put Katuska, The feelings of infirmities. To leave. Ladies and gentlemen, there's something called the wisdom of the just. Sometimes God will tell you to exercise, but he will not say it face to face to you. One day, Rick Joyner said he was sitting in his place. God said, you have to play golf. He said, ah, golf. I'm a prophet. Why should I go and play golf? He was arguing with God. Sometimes God wants to tell you, but you argue with him. So God sent Raven Hill. Do you know Raven Hill? He said, the church that is not praying is playing. He said, the church began in the upper room agonizing. They are ended in the supper room organizing. So this is a man who does not tolerate nonsense. In this, he said to Rick Joyner, the Lord said I should tell you, you should play golf. So even God knew that the person who is come to say play golf 
He, it is really God who is there, you tell me. Because he is not given to amusement. Are you understanding? So sometimes you speak to somebody and you can hear from the counsel you are getting that this guy you want to date, everything this man is telling you is addressing that you have made a wrong choice. But you are wiser than God. Oh, he's, it's a coincidence. That type of failure is more disastrous than the one you didn't know. That's the wisdom of the just. That wisdom is what makes me learn this. As long as I follow the step of the spirit, there is no conversation. There is no loose statement that I heard by mistake. There is a reason I came into contact with that information. There's a reason. If you live like this, you'll be all-rounded. Because I just showed you, if Pastor Tintok is 40, Pastor Isi, 40, all of them in their 40s, all of them, and I sit with them, and they are telling me how they've done ministry. Countenance is sharpening countenance. That means that, my dear, how they were raised in upper Nigeria with the spirit of Muslims around them. Then I interfaced with Baba Delvan. And he, he made me come and preach in church in Kaduna and showed, drove me around Kaduna. This, 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 this. It was not by mistake. I preached in Lagos and as he was singing, he gave me the mic that I should also sing. It was not by mistake. It was operations of transference. God do not invent mantles. They are already here, but men are carrying it. People are access doors to the destiny life you are asking for. If you don't know how to honor them, you will never receive from them. Even when they want to pour, they are aware to just be what is coming out. What is in their belly will never fall on you. Even if they also don't want to pour, because you've honored them, even if they don't bless you, what they carry, God will. The Bible says God lifted the spirit of Moses. Moses didn't even know God would do that. He said, bring the 70. By the time he realized something was lifting him, and he put it on the 70. So there's a realm like that. Even if a man doesn't want to bless you, God will lift what you carry and put it on the people because God said they deserve that blessing. That's what he did to Elisha. After Elisha's service, Elijah wanted to carry the mantle to heaven. God pulled it from his hand. So the Bible said the mantle dropped from the sky. The Bible didn't say Elijah threw it. It dropped. It means the man has held onto it. When he got to the barrier between heaven and earth, God said it can't enter. Drop it. And the Holy Ghost pulled it from his hand. Because if it was given, you see when he met Elisha, he dropped it on his shoulder. He did this. So he didn't do that to him. It was the chariot in the sky. The mantle came, fell on the floor. The Bible says Elisha walked and took it. So the man didn't want to give to him. <laughs> but God said he has served in the spirit and honored you enough. Even if you hate him, what you carry, I will lift. That is why what Saul did for David, he hated David. But do you know what God did? Amongst all the friends of David, David didn't have friends growing up. The first friend he now gets is somebody who is raised in the palace. The principle of companionship. Your friend will tell me where you are going. Friend will tell. If your friend likes women, you will learn it. If your friend cheats on his wife, you will learn it. It's a matter of time. So today when you go home, do the draft policy of the friends around you. Where are the people you call closest to? Who are the people you are vulnerable to? If they are going nowhere, I announce to you, you are going to be stuck in your destiny. You see this journey, very soon we're all 1040. You see this journey, very soon we're all 1050. You see this journey, very soon we'll all be in retirement. You see this journey, we'll all be 70. But what you are investing now, and the people you keep around you, will determine whether when you are 70, you have pedigree to transfer to a people again. Watch where you. Don't make friends hurriedly. For what? Proverbs 18, 24 is a double-edged sword. If you want to have friends, make yourself friendly. But he too that makes himself too friendly has many friends. Is destroying his life. That means God said have friends. But be very selective. Because when they come your way, what they carry. I have friends who sing. So singing comes on me. That's why I have those people in my life. Minister Geometer, Pastor Isaiah, they are all around me. So I know the anointing for singing Sharpens when I'm around them. And sometimes they tell man of God, key now to you know the cue sang is serious. And I say, Man of God, is it true? Yeah. Man, the pastor I was telling him, Man of God, you have your natural range. You know, your voice is like Chris Delvin, that horse thing. You have to believe it. So it you see, I'm around those people. 
So he stirs it up. So show me your friend, I'll show you where you are going. It's not a lie, it's true. Go and look at the friends you have. All your friends, they cheat on their husbands. You will join. You are the only one that doesn't do it. You think you are the holy one. Very soon. It's an engineering that has started in your heart. Opportunity has not presented itself. That means the day your husband provoke you, you will show him pepper. Because you've already learned it. You didn't know you had it. All your friends have marriages failed. You to your own is going to fail. Though. Yeah, because, yeah, of, of course, I'm not talking of those who, because of circumstances, but I'm talking of those one who, hey, you can't let your husband control you, is it? Very soon you'll do it to your husband. I thank my God that the company I'm with, nobody says my wife is difficult. This is my wife. I don't. Now, nobody in our company says women are, women are strange. It's not a language amongst our brotherhood. No. We don't even say, you know, women, hmm, you know, they are women, so we have to accept. It doesn't happen like that. That's not how we talk about wives, where we come from. So you can't even talk like that around me. The moment you say that to me, many of the sons that they come, I say, hey, don't talk like that about your wife. What, what's the meaning of that? Your women are hard. Who told you that? Women are difficult. Who told you that? Don't be silly. They are wonderful. You get what you say. You are a priest. If you wanted to be serious, say you are a serious woman. My wife is serious. My wife is honorable. My wife is wonderful. My wife is kind. My wife knows what she's doing. She's intelligent. You are prophesying over her life. You make a woman the same way she also makes you. Raise your hand to heaven. Holy are you Lord. There are many other things. All creation calls you God. Worthy, worthy is your name. Is your name? Oh, oh, oh. We, we worship your Majesty. Your Majesty. God willing, on the 10th of December, Dr. George is going to be with us. We will have a special meeting before Christmas because Pastor Chintok is also coming to Ghana. Then, 26th December, we have Prophetic Worship Warfare Conference at the Nut Hall. Then 31st night, we have a special, special Jewish crossover. Jewish crossover means that 31st night this year, service starts at 2.30 and closes at 8 p.m. So we are going to cross over Jewish style. By 6 p.m., 31st of Ghana GMT, the year has ended. Then the year begins 601. The year has begun for us already because the Jewish calendar there was evening there was morning the first day so our first January will start 6 p.m. 31st into the next day 6 p.m. that's our first day but I want some people to join me and of course throughout the fast we are starting our 24 day 24 day fast it's 24 day fast because it's a prophetic declaration for 2024. So it's 24 days for the year 2024. And the theme of the fast is activating the supernatural life, top living. From 21st, 21st means that tomorrow, 11.59 is 20th. 12 midnight is 21st. That's where we start the prayers. So midnight tomorrow. Can you put that, that flyer up quickly? 
So 21st, 12 midnight of Tuesday, we are starting the prayers for our supernatural life activation conference, uh, fast, sorry. And then, we already have our team for 2024. You know that. So 31st, we'll unveil it here. We'll pull it out for you to see. Get ready for something amazing. You don't sound like somebody who's ready for something amazing. Yeah. Uh, because apparently, some people have started sending us text online that they've started getting miracle monies. We've not started fast, but already people are getting testimonies already. It has started flowing. So it should tell you that, you know, if the fast has not started and testimonies have started coming, then when we start, it's going to flow like water. So this one, put your last on it. The first seven days of the fast is normal. Six to six, you break with your abetia, rice, whatever, ampesie, bodrejo, you and Jesus Christ. But after seven days, that is from 28 onwards, we enter specialized fast. Dry, fruit, vegetables, you know, we mix it up. Water fast, we mix it all of those things. It's going to be powerful. So our dry fast is water fast. It means you can drink water in the day, but in the night you don't, you don't eat, you drink water to the next if it's three days, 48 hours, 72 hours dry, you just drink water. Ah, bones you, sir. They bones you. Let me be born. Hallelujah. <laughs> now, I have another announcement to make to you. If the Lord is also speaking to you to be a volunteer in Ephesus, we are opening applications from tonight. Um, send us a mail on admin. They will give you the requirements to send your letter. When you send your letter, you will meet a board of interviewers. Yes. No, because if you join volunteers, you have entered a very elite force. So it, here we don't joke. Most of my volunteer meetings is, I don't tell them, next week we are, every two months we are meeting, it's, it's emergency meetings. So on the call, you get a text Tuesday morning, Thursday evening we have emergency meeting, you have to be there. So it's not a place you come and play, I'm trying to know. Number two, it's, it's not for affiliates. Uh -huh. We'll open the door for affiliates and volunteers, but we are looking for people who are part of us who believe that they are willing to be part of this work so that anytime we call you, don't say, oh, you are helping your church. <laughs> this must be where you worship so that it's easier for us to do the work with you. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. So send us the letter. If you have been led to join the workforce, send us a letter. We'll do an interview. January, when we go on a January 7th is our first service. Is it 6th or 7th? 7th, eh? First Sunday, 7th. Okay. So, first Sunday, 7th, when we meet, we will we'll be on a break till the 28th. So, you know, we go on a three-week break. So, 28th December, uh, January is when we resume 2024 after our first service, 7th January. So, church will be about volunteers will have a volunteers retreat from 10th to 14th. So, if you want to be part of it, let your letter come early. Let's prepare for you so that that retreat you are there. Because that one, we're going to have very powerful times with you in the spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Are we together? Yeah. God willing, coming January, we are having a wedding. So, you already know the wedding. Next Sunday, we'll introduce them to you. Because we have to, we have to announce them three before the time. So, we announce them. So They have to get us their bands and then the announcements will be done accordingly. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you here? Are you excited? Are you, are you sure you're excited? Forgive me if today I kept long. It's a long time I saw you. So all the, all the things I wanted to tell you, I've told you today. Next week, I've seen you already, so I'll just go straight to the point. <laughs> 8 o'clock, I'll say go home. Amen. Because I told you I have to be a pram pram right now. So um, I don't know where they are at the service at the moment, but we'll see how it goes. Um, lift your hands to Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Lord, I thank you for your people. 
I thank you for your children. I pray in the name of Jesus. Let him that is weary receive strength. I just felt a weariness come over me. And the Lord said, people are tired. People are tired. People want to give up. Uh, but receive the strength of God. Just receive it. It's not difficult. Receive it. You are stronger than you think. You are capable than you think. There is nothing too late for God to repair. Receive strength. Look at the strength of God coming. Ushers, watch it for me. Okay. Some people are receiving strength again. Some it will require vig- it to be carried. It to it will come with reactions because God is about to energize them. Speed. God says six weeks will be more than 24, 36, 56 weeks. It is going to be more. The next six weeks will be more than the last 48 weeks that you feel you have wasted. Look at that. Look at that. (laughs) Yes. Strength. Strength. Your mind is opening again. Strength. All the miracles God promised you is coming. Ah, It's coming. Strength. Yes. Strength from above. You are strengthened from above. Your hands were made strong for the battles you are fighting, my dear. Yes. It's been so. It's been so. Not everybody understands where you are going. Let them let you go. Don't be afraid of the things that have been said about you. And the threats that have been made that if you leave us, your life will never be the same. I made you and all that. But today, strength. The strength to believe your future is secure in God. Strength. Strength from above. Strength from above. Strength from above. Lord, whoever needs that help, help to continue. Help to persist and insist. I just saw God say, I'm giving them the power of insistence. You are like that woman who they've slept on your baby. And they are taking you to court. And it looks like you can say, oh, let her have the child. But you are insisting the child should not die. God said you are receiving the capacity to insist on your birthright. Look at that one. Look at insistence. It's coming. It's like a wave. It's like a wave. Ushers, help them. You will not be tired again, oh. The tiredness cycle has ended. Receive strength from above. I pray for everybody watching us online. Strength from above. Those who, everywhere they are, wherever you are connected from in the world, strength from above. Let a freshness enter your space. Let it enter your house. Let it enter your business. Let it enter your marriage. Let it enter your ministry. Freshness. Freshness. Freshness in Bible study. Freshness in prayer. Freshness. Yes, freshness. Oh, yes. Freshness. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. There are four men here. Oh, there's a freshness coming to your destiny. Ah, Four. They will shake. God is bringing freshness to your destiny. It's like I see a deconstruction and a reconstruction happening. Yes. Take it. Take it. Take it. One, two. Take it. Aha. Take it. Freshness. Freshness. Your destiny is being reconstructed. Ay, 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 ay. Ah. <sighs> Freshness. If you have freshness. <laughs> yes. Resurrection. Freshness. Freshness. Sir. Freshness. Freshness. Oh, yes. Freshness. Freshness. Hannah, freshness. <laughs> you will not waste your life. Hannah, you will not waste your life. Freshness. 
freshness. Oh yes, you know we still alive. Your sage farana tora bale getushkora Freshness. Freshness. Oh yes, freshness. Freshness. You can't be tired. The Lord brought you here for this. Yes, it's I should touch you. Freshness. Oh yes, hold it, hold it, hold it. Ish. Maradas, 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 maradas. Blessing, come to me. Maradas, maradas, maradas. Come, maradas. Seko pale le 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 le. Freshness. Lift your hands. I restore. I restore. I restore. Freshness. He will do it. He will do it. He's faithful. He's faithful. Even if you don't believe, he's faithful. Oh, oh, oh. He has called you to glory. Oh. He didn't call you to shame. <laughs> Faustina, he didn't call you to shame. He will do it. I activate heaven. Kekobas bas basale. Basalavora baladash. Let all hands that have touched my head, the anointings and the virtues of God, set you on this course of unprecedented glory for Stina. After hands have been laid on you, you are going to shine, run with power, glory like never before. Hey! Hey! Sasapatombele gedere. Now let the anointing of God rest upon you. Let it rest. Let it rest. Freshness. Freshness. Kalalalama. Kune come. Kune come. Let me pray for you. Come with your sister. Let me pray for you. Mozele gade brosaya. Brozo so de kese kese. Brado do do zegele bele. Give my towel. Give my towel. Where's my towel? Quickly. Rush, rush. Bring it to me. Give me my towel quickly. Run, run, run. Hurry up. Hurry up. So, le, 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 le. Freshness. God made you my daughter for a purpose. God made you. Therefore, today, everything in you that must express God, everything in you that must feel the full expression of His presence right now, right now, I call it forth. This coming year, you are fully clothed with the armor of God. An unprecedented speed. Unprecedented. It will be so fast. So fast. So intense. So mind-blowing. He said, pray for her. And release grace of resurrection. Therefore, receive the resurrection power. Today, you have power to cause things that are dying to receive life again. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> you will never be helpless anymore. Daughter, you will never be helpless again. You won't. You won't. Lord, let your energy rest upon her. Yes, let it, let it, let it, let it, let it, let it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Help it. Help it. Help it. Help it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I release glory over you. Jesus. Lord, today I set the record straight. I declare by the power of God and by the favor of Christ. They that are fighting will fail. They can't win. They can't fight God's favor in your life. Therefore, Lord, today I rectify every breach in cover. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. You will not fight unknown battles. Every surprise attack of the devil, I cancel it. Vanessa, I cancel it. Please take this prayer seriously. Every surprise attack of Satan against your life I break it now in the name of Jesus 
The devil will not spring a surprise attack on you. While men slept, you will not spring attack. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let me pray for the children. Bring them to me. Bring all the children one by one. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I bless it. Blessings. Yes. Blessings. Bless you. Blessings. Anointing. Blessings. I anoint you all. I bless you. I bless you. Blessings. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Blessings. Oh, Bring all the children to me. Blessings. Father, in this month of November, we secure these children. No evil will be for them. The devil will not succeed. They are the breed of God. No child will have casualty. Blessings. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Where are the teachers? Let me pray for all of you. Let, let me pray for the teenagers. Blessings. No evil will be for you. No evil will come your way of dwelling. Father, I pray for the caretakers. I pray for the teachers. Blessings. 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 Holy Spirit. Blessings. 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 Thank you. Bless you. Bless you again. Lord, we give you glory. We honor you. Thank you. See you online at midnight on Tuesday dawn. Say after, say after me, Lord Jesus, tonight 